If you want to try some dark and moody decor in your home, keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. This is a compilation video, so all giveaways are closed. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this compilation video. All right, so this is going to be our Raven Skull Flip. This is what it looks like when you get it from Dollar Tree. This is a Dollar Tree Plus item, and I paid $3 for it. I had an idea for it, but it turned out so much better than I expected. Y'all have got to keep watching this. So you can see it is coated in glitter. These are two little earrings that I took apart that were on another project I did, and I've just removed them so I can reuse them. You can see it still has black felt right here. We're going to leave that. It's going to help us with glue. You're going to need a brush, a bucket, some hot water. Yeah, you're going to need more than that. So, I'm going to soak this down in some hot water. I soaked it. I took a brush. I took off as much as I could. Then I had to get some goo gone. And after I dried it, put the goo gone on it and then scraped it off. It took a lot of elbow grease. But look at what is under all that glitter. Now you can clearly see here that some glitter is still there, but I made a point to go in each of those little sections below the, the feathers and all of that with a little pointy, it's like a wood carving tool, so the thickness of the glitter would be gone and you wouldn't see that texture. Okay, so that's how that looks so far. Not worried about that skull, we're going to fix that. I'm going to take this slate colored Rust-Oleum 2X paint and spray this entire thing and the little hands. Now you're going to need some wood. So whatever type that you find in the yard that would be big enough for you to put this on, this is going to be a base. Originally I had bought a black wire base from Dollar Tree, but when I saw the results when the glitter came off, I thought, no, something more special has to be done. So you can use a piece like this. But you have to make sure that it's balanced. So you just want to take it and just sand it down like there's a high spot in the back. Sand it down so it's flat and it will be balanced. Then you can seal your edges with a little bit of spray. Just a sealer. Okay, so here are the little hands. And here is the crow and the skull or the raven. Looks pretty good. It's pretty flat and one-dimensional right now, but it does help the other paints to cling to it, and that's kind of the idea. Now, I have some of these paper, they're like a napkin, I guess you could say, but they're pretty thick. I use them with cleaning and, and that sort of thing, but you can use these also to help keep your projects clean. I don't want any cream-colored paint on my Raven, so I'm going to take this and wad it up and fold it around as close as I can get it to the Raven, and then I'll use some painter's tape or whatever tape you have to tape it off and protect it. So I'm going to put it around the bottom part and just anywhere that it overlaps and folds, put it there. I'm trying to make sure that it overlaps in areas where the paint might be a little thicker so that the paint won't go through. And you do better with spray paint also when you do like a lighter layer and then go back over it again. It gives you a smoother look without all the drips. Now I'm just going to push it in there. I'm going to take this Navajo paint and I'm going to spray it. It's like a cream color. You can see the look of it or a very light beige. That is going to be the base color. Now you can see that the raven was protected and he looks nice. There's how he looks. But you see all this little area around? This is where we couldn't get in. So we're going to use this chalk paint and sheepskin and go right along the edge with the brush. Now I've got a, it's like a pointed brush and I like to use it to push the paint into the little recessed areas. So you can see me kind of push it in and then pull it down, push it in and then pull it down. And that's going to help get that first layer of paint on there. I don't want to make it too thick, but I also want it to be covered as much as I can get it covered. It does take two coats in these dark areas to get that covered up. And of course, if you wanted to do the process 
of covering up the skull so that it didn't get any of this on it. You just painted over the gold. You can absolutely do that. But if you watch my channel for a while, you already know. Sometimes I don't really know where I'm going with the project until it hits me and then I run with it. Well, that's kind of what happened. I had no idea this thing was going to be this beautiful. I mean, from Dollar Tree. From Dollar Tree, y'all. Three bucks. Well worth the money, in my opinion. Okay. So you can see here what I'm doing, and I'm going to make sure that I go, you can see how I'm pushing in between and the talons here, or the, um, the little feet. I'm going to go right in between those and just push it in. And that's the, the advantage of having a little pointed brush like this, because you can get in those spots. You definitely can do it. Use your imagination and go with whatever you like. But this is going to be a very organic looking Halloween and not even specifically Halloween. This could also be if you just love the spooky life. You know, have this in your house all the time. I love this. So I'm just going to take this sheepskin and this flat brush and go all over this. I'm going to go over his teeth, the back of the head. I'm not going to worry about putting anything on the bottom specifically because we're going to be gluing it down. And there's no sense having the paint in the way. And sometimes paint will peel up. And if it peels up, then you lose your grip and it will fall off. And this is like a poly resin, so that's what it is called anyway. You're going to continue all along with this. And you can see that I'm going back over here. And then you don't have to push the paint down into the grooves between the teeth or in the grooves anywhere, any indentions, because we want those areas to be a little bit darker at any rate. So, you know, you don't have to be that attentive. Y'all can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's free to subscribe, and I'd love to talk to you in the comments. Once that chalk paint is dry, we're going to work on this bird. I'm going to grab some of my black chalkboard paint. This came from Dollar Tree and a little chippy brush. And we're going to start layering a little bit on this raven. You can skip this step if you don't like it. You could certainly take black spray paint and just go ahead and color it black. And that will be that. But I like to add a little more dimension to my projects. So I'm going to be using this next step. Now I'm going to try to dip into the paint and I'm going to offload a little bit of that. So nothing is too thick. And then I'm going to brush over the entire bird. I'm going to try to go along, almost like you painting wood when you follow the grain. So I'm going to follow like the feather pattern down this bird. I'm going to go straight down over it. And then there will be areas where the slate color will show through. And there will be areas where the black shows through. You're going to take a paper towel and you can just pat off some of that paint if you want to. You can use a paper towel to hold your project if you are a messy painter like I am. And I'm definitely a messy painter, messy crafter. Y'all see my fingernails always look ridiculous. They're clean, but they usually have paint stains on them. So you get the idea. Now you want to start off light on this just in case. You don't want to get too heavy handed. Uh, but like I said, go ahead and grab a paper towel. Have that ready in case you do get a little blob on there. You can brush it back off. Just take your time with this. You don't want to get this black paint all over the white that you've already painted. And I actually did, but I went back in and, and fixed it. So that's how it's going to look so far. And now I'm just going to wipe back some of that paint. And I like that. That's the look I was going for. All right, I'm going to get a little bitty pointed brush and go into that black again, and I am going to paint his eyes because right now they're more of a gray color. So I'm just going to kind of balance my pinky on there and color over his little eyes. I don't want to paint any strange colors. I don't want to do any glittery. Like I said, this is going to be organic, so I don't want to put anything that might take away from that. We want this to be natural. Okay, I am also coloring the beak, and all the way up where the beak connects to the head, there's a little dent there. I went over that as well. Make it nice and neat. 
And then I decided to go up to where the eyelids are too, to just make those eyes a little bit bigger, a little more pronounced. And you can see it now. Now any of the places where the white has bumped up against the black, I'm going to go back over with my black and color that. So if it's a raised area where the skull and the bird are together, then the raised area belongs to the bird, right? So the feet, the bottom of the wings, those sorts of things are all part of the bird. We want to make those black. And doing this, it's almost like when you're a kid and you're coloring in a coloring book and you go back over with, a, with black. Or if you go back over with a really heavy hand on the lines, that's kind of what this does. It cleans it up, gives it more of a crisp look, in my opinion, and I just like to do this. I don't always show it because it's an extra step that a lot of people are not willing to take the time to do. So, like I've said before, some of the projects that I do, they take a little bit of time, but it is worth the time, if you have it, to make one good project rather than five kind of cheapy projects, right? Something that you really love that you could keep for a long time. And that's what this project is. So I'm very carefully going along and making sure that I have that, you can see where the cream or the white color, it's actually like sheepskin. But by the way, you know, you can use whatever color whites that you have. I just prefer the cream color because it's a little more natural looking to me. And I hope that nobody is offended by this and that nobody thinks that this is something that is uh, gross or gory because to me the human body is beautiful. I think that um, God did amazing things when he created us. And I'm a trained nurse, so I see the beauty in things like this. Some people don't, and that's okay. If it's not for you, you don't have to watch. Okay, so I remembered I had this piece of wood Yes, we did a fairy on another piece of wood like this, but I thought, yeah, this is really going to set this off. This is a piece of wood I want. I'm going to use some of this moss. Now, one's a finer one, and the other one is a little bit more grassy looking. I've got some watered-down coffee grinds, a little spray bottle, a jar, and a little strainer. And I'm going to show you how to make your own stain in case you don't have a stain of your own that you want to use. Pour it through it, some type of a sieve and it will strain out your seeds. Try not to get too much of that chalky part of the coffee down in there because it won't go through the sprayer. I learned that the hard way. Um, this idea of using tea and paint, uh, and coffee rather, is, was not my idea. This is something that I've seen done before and I'm just copying that. This is not an original idea, so I'm not claiming it. Nobody think I am. Um, but once we get that spray going like we want it, we are going to start spraying this down. Now you can spray it even on the bird and let that drip down onto the skull if you want to. The idea is to have something flowing over it. Now this is chalk paint, so you need to quickly dry it and just don't thoroughly saturate it, right? We don't want to do that because the chalk paint will come off. What I have used here is an alcohol spray. It's a black color and I've used it to age things before. This is what I want to put on top of our base layer. We're going to use a couple of different shades here and a couple of different paints to give this an aged look. So this is the first one. I am trying to be sure with this baby wipe, this is what I'm kind of blending with, that I get in all of the deep depressions in the bone here around the teeth, around the nose, the eyes, um, where the mandible, you know, meets on the side, where it is underneath the bird, and look at that already. If this is how you wanted to leave it, you can leave it that way. Once it's dried, this is how that is going to look in case you like that look. I am going to add some wax to it. I'm also going to grab some fake limbs. Okay, another baby wipe and a little bit of this wax and we are going to add it onto our skull. So I'm gonna put it in there and kind of squish it around in the wipe and then start applying it down. Now I am lightly doing this. I don't wanna do it too heavy because it will pull off the chalk paint that's underneath. You just have to be light-handed with this and take your time. These types of projects do take time and just be willing to dedicate the time if you want to do it, okay? But you can already see the change this is making. Already. I'm going to get in all the areas just like we did with the other paints and then where, the, where I can't reach, like in the crevices and around the, the little bird feet, I'm going to go in with the brush and just dip it straight into there 
into the antiquing wax and go all around the feet. And you know, this is a black bird, so you're not gonna notice it that much that it's on there. Um, I, I can't notice it at all, actually, I can't tell. Totally up to you. I'm not gonna add too much on the inside of the eyes right now. You could do black if you want, but I've got something different that I'm gonna do here. Okay, so you can see I'm just applying it in all over there. I get the little temporal bones and everything. Just get in there and really load it down. The idea is that this is a weathered skull. So this is going to be a weathered process. Okay. Now you can see I'm tapping some on. I'm squishing some on. I'm making this look different. I don't want it to be symmetrical. Going around the teeth and the chin and the jawline. Try not to get any of that on the bottom because we're going to be gluing there, like I mentioned before. And you want that bottom to have a good grip on the piece of wood that we're going to be putting it on. So when you get the look that you like, you can stop and let that dry. Yes, love it. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to add a little more on that side. Then I'm just going to use what's left to tap all over the bird. And like I said, you might not notice it. You might, it'll just take that bluish tone down a little bit, and I like that. So these are chalk painted. I'm now going to put this alcohol spray on here. You can put more or less, or you can use your coffee, your little coffee spray you made. I'm just going to tap this around a little bit, and you see it's got just a little bit left on there. Then I'm going to take the wax on a chippy brush, tap a little off, and then I'm going to drop it. Yes, I am, because I do that. And then I'm going to go back and forth, just flicking that brush all over the fingers. Not important to do the bottom of the hands. Don't worry about that part. You're not going to see it how I put it down. However, if you're going to have the palm up on your hands, then be sure that you do that side. Once that is all in, and like I said, get it in those cracks really well, I'm going to put them on a dry napkin, and while they're still wet, I'm just going to begin to pat and lightly rub some of that off of the surface. And it makes an enormous difference. An enormous difference. Look at that. Yeah, I like that. I like that very, very much. And these are our little hands. You can see the little fingers. I forgot the tips. Don't worry about that. Now here are the hands. Okay, now the fun part. We get to assemble it. Now I'm trying to find the, the best area to put this where it is supported and stable. And this is perfect. Just like this. Oh, I'm loving this so much, y'all. I was so excited when I got it done. My husband and kids are at the camp and I had to send this to them so that he could see this project that I have been working on because I'm so very proud of it and I hope you love the end results as much as I do. I absolutely love it, and I'm going to put it on my fireplace today. Yes, today. All right, so any, place, any places that the skull is touching the wood is going to get a good amount of glue to hold it down. I'm going to take these fake branches, which, by the way, you can use regular branches out of your yard. These happen to have come from a wreath that I took apart and saved all the greenery pieces because I didn't want the wreath anymore. Got tired of it. Now there are little insect holes all in this piece of wood. I'm going to bend down the wire just a little bit and put some glue in there and then hold it in place. When you have these branches, sometimes when you buy them, they are flat, but they're not intended to be that way. You know, if you look at a tree in nature, they're not flat. So go ahead and flex those out if they're on wire. If not, just pick a branch up out of the yard and it's gonna look great too. I love that these have that little bit of moss on them it's just beautiful and I do not know where the wreath originally came from because I got it at the Goodwill bin store or the pay by the pound store okay now I'm gonna add one to the side just because I like the look of it and I'll glue that in place where it doesn't go anywhere so I'll be showing you in between all the steps and how it looks because at any point you want to stop you can go ahead and stop for me, I'm going to keep going because I think that's what makes my projects, uh, in particular, unique. Protect your fingers. No burnt fingers on my watch. No excuses to stop crafting, right? All right, so I'm going to take that moss, and I've chosen the moss that's a little more grassier, and I'm going to put it down 
in the cracks. I'm going to add it where any of the surfaces are touching one another. As if it is sitting in that moss in that little piece of tree. So I'm just pushing it in there. This is a good way to also hide if you have any areas that are a little bit higher, like one side of the skull sits flat and the other side is kind of raised up. So you can tuck that moss in there, gives it a little more support, and it gives it more of an organic look, in my opinion. Now to give this tree a little more support, I'm going to tuck this around the front and then bend it slightly forward so that I can glue some behind it, and that's going to hold it in place. All those little cracks, there's one up underneath the edge here. I'm just going to put glue in it and then just shove some moss in. I'll add some here, just wherever I think there might be some moss living. I'm just going to add it in there. And this is a mess. This is a total mess. I just want you to know that, but it is well worth it. Okay, and that's me adding a little more, just to make sure that everything stays in place. You know, at this point, if you wanted to stop, you absolutely could. But I'm going to keep going. So stay with me, because it's worth it. I think it's worth it. All right, I'm tucking some more moss in here. And some of this may look repetitive to you, but it's important to me that I show you every step of it uh, in this particular project, because it's all those little things that you do that bring out the uniqueness. And you want yours to be unique. You don't want this to be like something anybody else has. And I guarantee you, this $3 piece that I got from Dollar Tree looks completely different than it did when I bought it. And it makes this piece not look like everybody else's piece because it's unique. I made it my own. And that's what I want you to do to make yours your own. So let's put some moss in there right in the eye sockets. You could put rhinestones here, you could put crystals here, you could put mushrooms here. Whatever overall style you're going for, you could put here. I personally like the idea of this being a fall and Halloween type project. You know, again, for those who enjoy a spooky lifestyle. I'm going to add the hands down, making sure the thumb is closest to the head because, you know, that's how your hands are when you lay them down. And I'm just going to lay him down wherever I can find a little flat spot. I found this one little branch that I thrifted and haven't used because it's just a one piece. I'm going to cut it into pieces and we're going to use it in here to bring a little more color into this project and make it look a little more fall. And how beautiful. Nothing like a little burnt orange to go in a Halloween product. Well, project, product. To make it really look harvesty and fall-like and just spooky woods and, you know, and like I said before, life comes from death. And when you see something that dies in the woods, you see a tree down in the woods, fern grows, mushroom grows, moss grows. That's what I'm showing here. I hope these things I say do make sense to you. If you're a nature lover, I think that you get it. Okay, I'm going to tuck a piece right behind this little tree that's coming out or this branch. And I like to do these in, in threes or, you know, kind of in odd numbers. So I'm going to add a piece down here where this branch is coming off. I'll tuck a little more moss. And then if you don't have the right shape, cut them, glue them together. So I made a little trio for that side because I didn't have any left. This is how it looks. I want to add just a little bit more, but you know, we always look at our project, top, bottom, left, right, up, down, and that's what I'm doing here. And I decided, hmm, let's add a little more texture. So I went over to my box of goodies from the yard and to my box of leftover goodies and found some pine cones. I'm only going to add two here and I'm going to kind of hide them so they make a little surprise whenever you're looking at it. I'm going to add one up here, and I just tucked one to hide it. It just adds a little something else. I'm going to add a little moss by it. You could do acorns. Again, the mushrooms, if you wanted to do mushrooms, would be beautiful here too. You could put some of those little plastic bugs in here. 
if you like this project I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel I'm always trying to bring you unique different just high-end looks on a budget and of course when we're on this channel and we're in the comments we're kind to one another and we support one another the support that you guys give me is absolutely amazing um, I have a hard time believing sometimes that I have made YouTube a full-time job to help support my family and it just means the world to me and it couldn't have been done without you so I really really appreciate it and I hope that you can glean some knowledge and some ideas and of course to make it your own y'all this came from a three dollar piece and a bunch of scraps I already had and some stuff from the yard you can't beat that I found this little urn or pot at Goodwill. I'm going to use some baby wipes, some antiquing wax, some black paint, a little bit of metallic gold, inspired by the gold glitter on these flowers. This is our sign from Dollar Tree that we will be using on this project. Some creepy cloth, some thrifted flowers beautiful beautiful I like the red color it's gonna match what we have going on in the sign and then these are from Walmart the tag is gone but you can see here it's a Walmart tag these are gorgeous I got these oh maybe in July or very early August I'm gonna spray paint this a matte black and while that is drying I'm going to disassemble this sign fix the hole in the top just like we did before and then do the coloring and shading all around the edges. You could certainly use black marker or black paint here if you wanted to. But you know I like my rustics. I just decided to go ahead and deepen up the eyes or the orbits here. So I'm using my marker right in here. You don't have to do this if you don't like it. You can leave it exactly like it is. Nice and crispy white farmhouse looking with the little paneling on the back if you want to totally up to you depends on what style you're going for and what's going to match your home what's going to bring you joy or what just floats your boat i'm going to do the same thing with the nose and the same thing around the teeth all right that needs to be dry before you go on to the next step i'm going to use a baby wipe and some wax and i've been asked before uh, why i use a baby wipe with it that's just because it's already damp. It already has the perfect amount of dampness and it gives you like a wash of color rather than a really heavy, like if you used a paintbrush, it would be more of a solid color. And I'm not going for that. I want it really to look like an aging process and shadowing more so. So I have better control with a wipe and a wipe is thicker than a paper towel. Um, it doesn't shed like a paper towel does so you could certainly use paper towels if you don't have wipes and I really like that this has just deepened it up it's darkened up that color it looks more aged and for me especially this year I'm really liking like the um, darker cottage core type things so this works for me I think this this definitely would be something that you would see in a, uh, a little spooky house and it's pretty enough, in my opinion, to be used all year round, you know, if you're, if you're digging the spooky lifestyle. All right, so now we need to make something to go on the, uh, to make it a pick. So I'm just going to use this wooden dowel, and I'm going to use some corrugated cardboard, and I can just squeeze it through there. You don't have to do this. I just thought it was, it just became an idea to me, and I was like, hey, I could do that. And then I don't have to put an extra piece on the back. So I did that. Added some hot glue. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom part. I'm going to add the hot glue. Y'all excuse my shaky voice. I don't know why it's like this this morning, but it is a little on the shaky side. I'm not sick or anything. I probably just need a little more water. Okay, I'm going to go across here to make sure nothing spins around or moves. Really want to lock it in place because I'll be shoving it down in the arrangement that we're going to make. And then you'll need to paint that black and let it dry. Here is the floral foam that we're going to be using. Here is that urn. 
Now, I didn't focus a lot on cleaning the inside. I did give it a good rinse, but no scrubbing because we're not going to see the inside. I'm not going to waste some time. You do you. I'm going to grab that beautiful gold paint and I'm going to go all around the edge. And then I'll start going around the urn all over. And for me, yes, I'm going heavy here on the edge of it because I just wanted to. You can certainly do it lighter. And then I'm going to feather it out or blend it outward. Now, the harshness you will not see when I am done. For those of you who are doubting right now and going, oh no, what is she doing? Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Just see me out now because I want y'all to understand by watching my process that don't give up on a project in the beginning if you're thinking that you have totally goofed up. No, just keep working with it. Keep working with it. Let the inspiration go. Just let that creativity flow and just keep building on it. You know, I'm doing light, light with a rough brush, a little chippy brush, because this is how I like to do it. And I found I have the best control over the paint when I'm doing shading and aging techniques when I do it this way. And I'm just kind of dipping in and then dipping it off. That's just a, a round that I have there that has plastic on it and I can wipe it off easily. And it works really well for me to blend out, um, you know, tap off excess color and such. Because you see there, I got it really heavy in one spot, not an issue. And if it gets to a point where once it is dry, you still think you got too heavy in certain areas, just go back in there with the chippy brush. You can use the same brush, add a little more of that black to it, the um, chalk paint. And just go over that, you know, and then you can kind of buff that down. Once it gets to the point where I feel like I've got enough on there, I'm going to take that same brush without adding any more paint to it. And I am just going to blend, 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 blend. I am going to blend it like you blend the makeup that is on your jawline and in your hairline, right? Right, ladies, if you understand, or gents, if you wear makeup, you understand what I'm saying. Blend, blend, blend. And to me, this just looks so old and it looks like an old tarnished brass pot but you know use your imagination because that's the thing about crafting it might not be truly authentic but you can make it look exactly how you have it in your head if you if you really think about it and you just go with it and for me I just go with it I don't even always know what we're going to use. I start off by telling you some things that I plan to use and then I add all kinds of extra stuff to it. That's just how my brain works. It's how my spirit flows. All right, so this piece works perfect in the bottom and then I'm going to add a round disc to the top and I'll just use the same types of floral pins to hold that in place. But you can use pieces of extra floral branches, whatever you have to kind of lock yours in place. I'm not going to use hot glue because it won't stick to that other type that's in the bottom of it. It won't stick to it. It'll just peel off. But you see how sturdy that is? Didn't even have to glue anything. Now I will take my beautiful thrifted flowers and start adding those in. Generally, I start at the top and add my tallest piece. The tallest piece for this arrangement is going to be our sign. So we'll just say the next step would be one step down. All right, so now you can see here that kind of, now you don't have to do it this way. I'm not a trained florist at all, but this is just how I like to do it. And it always turns out pleasing to the eye, to me. And then people who see my projects, they, they say that it looks good too and balanced too. So that's kind of what I go for. I'll take some of the beautiful black and red foliage and start adding that in. The bottom where you can see the white foam, I will be later putting that black creepy cloth in there and that's going to cover the entire thing. So I think that I skipped that when I was filming, but it no worries, it's in there and I think you'll see on the end screen when I show you all the pieces that you can't see into the pot. All you see is the creepy cloth and the flowers. I'm going to continue going around. I like to turn my project from side to side, look at it from all directions to see if there are any gaps or any areas that don't look like they mesh well with the arrangement. So, you know, I'm not gluing these in. I can pull these out and adjust them if I need to. If you're going to do this to make it something that is long term, then I encourage you to be sure where you want them before you glue them down. Add a little hot glue to the stem and then you can put them in the foam. 
these aren't going anywhere in my house though. They're perfect the way they are. So now I'm just going to nestle that little sign straight down in the top. And I think that this piece would be beautiful sitting on your mantle or someplace where, you know, since the back is not um, decorated that you would not see the back of that sign. So just someplace against a wall, on a shelf, on a cabinet. The donation that you make for your membership, all that goes right back into my channel. So it helps me and it helps for me to bring you the projects that you have known and come to love. You subscribe to my channel so you do not miss any of the notifications when we have giveaways. Hit the little, the little bell over there on the side. That way you get notifications when I put out new material and when I put out posts on my community post. The first project will be a forest looking glass. All right, so we're gonna start off with some frosted glass spray by Rust-Oleum. Some E6000, a glue gun of course. And you could certainly use the fix-all adhesive if you would like. I got a mirror for $15 at Hobby Lobby because I did not have one available. It was on clearance. It's a weird, wonky looking egg shape. I'm gonna take it, clean it, and then I'm gonna spray it with three coats of this. And I'm praying this works because I have never done this process before. And look at it. It looks nice and spooky and foggy. So I'm gonna take this shimmer spray that I have been using a lot, Shimmer Mist, and it is in a tarnished silver. I love to use this for aging. If you haven't watched my videos uh, yet, I like to use this just to show some age. Now, I wanted to antique a piece of mirror, but I didn't have anything and I couldn't find anything without a backing on it like this. This is like a really heavy, heavy strong, thick, plastic base on the back which I'm fine with that's gonna keep my glass secure so I'm fine with that but I had to figure out a way to make it look aged without working on it from the back side like you normally would do just I looked around on Pinterest for for ways to do it and I didn't see it done this way so this may be something new for you too so I'll just spray some on and then I'll pat it off with my towel this spray is it's a, like a very dark slate color until you, you know, if it's a, a big spray, you know, you get a lot on there. So I like to pat it off with the cloth and then you can see that silver underneath it. And I think that it blends in nicely and it doesn't lift up any of the spray that I put on there. So that is definitely a success. Y'all bear with me in this video. My allergies are going nuts and I have been coughing just sporadically I don't even know my throat starts itching I start coughing so if I don't talk as much in this video that's why because I'll have to edit out the coughs okay so now I'm taking some of this um, acrylic paint that I have and I'm just going to put this on this is just a torn piece of bath sponge I took one and tore it to shreds to use for doing these types of techniques to give it even more of an aged look and I'm just pouncing that all over Again, this is something I have never done before, so, you know, it's a process. I'm going to take some dark gray paint, and I'm going to add that on as well, I'm using bigger little pounces with this all over. And then I will be patting this off. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not going heavier on the edges or what I'm doing here, I want to create like a mossy mirror. I know everybody has seen those at this point, but I wanted to do my own spin on it and see you know, what it would look like in my home. And I really want to use this in my room. So I like the look of this. And I think that for me, this is great. Okay, so there's a ton of different colored mosses and textures that you can get from Dollar Tree. And this is some that my husband had bought me. And then of course, the moss that I've taken out of my own yard. Protect your fingers, everybody. I'll take my hot glue gun and I'm going to start putting this down. You can use whatever adhesive you want. Like I've said before, I like to use hot glue as often as I can for time's sake when I'm making videos. I don't wanna to have to wait for days because I put out two videos a week and some of my crafts are quite complex. They take a little time to do, so I need to be cautious of my time, you know? 
So I'm just going to add this on a little at a time. As soon as you put that glue on that mirror, it's going to almost be like when you put it on metal. It's going to cool very quickly. So just be sure that you are moving quickly. That's why I'm making a huge mess. You might want to do this outside or do this over uh, maybe a shallow box so you can collect that moss and save it. You'll see I'm going to do that anyway. All right, I'm patting, patting, patting. Now you can also grab a spatula if you would like. I'm going to shake that off and then kind of bounce it on the table just a little bit. And the only reason I feel safe doing that is because of the backing that's on here. It's very thick and I am barely bumping it on the table to knock the stuff loose. You can use Mod Podge. You can use um, any type of regular glue if you would rather do that instead of using this. I think that if you used E6000, you would definitely use more than one tube. Just keep that in mind. That could raise your cost significantly. So glue works pretty good for me. The hot glue does. Okay, so now there's different colored mosses and I'm playing around here and doing different colors and just kind of having some brown and some green, just as you would see in nature. The moss underneath my tree, just for an example, used to be a very beautiful dark green and it had some lighter green in it, but we have not had rain in so long that it is turning brown. So there are areas that are getting a little more sun that are a little more brown. All right, so now I'm gonna add this on, like I said, and I'm gonna go all the way around with the same kind of technique. The bottom, I'm gonna have a little bit thicker than the top. You can see I'm just tapping it off, tapping it off, making sure you get it off. You can spray in between with some hairspray if you wanted to. You could spray it with some uh, Mod Podge spray or clear sealer, something like that. You definitely don't want to use a brush on top of it to paint anything on, but a spray would be fine. And the mirror already has an aged look, so you wouldn't be hurting anything. So I'm taking all my little scraps. I'm putting them in this little, this little pumpkin pan that I have just because it was there. And I'm just kind of mixing all the colors together. And now I have a little bit of variety and it's kind of mixed together. I'm using just a little spatula, literally a little spatula, and I'm gonna just press it down into the glue for the bigger sections. I do this for a while because I wanna show you how to do it right to protect your fingers and not hurt yourself. And then you will see me at some point switching over to just my bare fingers. Didn't burn myself. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for watching out for my fingers. Okay, so now I'm just gonna continue around. I want this bottom section to be I want to follow the fact that it is not a perfect circle or egg shape like it is uh, asymmetrical, I guess is what I'm getting at. So I'm just going to respect that shape and I'm going to, you know, use it to my advantage. I'll make some sections a little thicker, some a little thinner. Now here's some reindeer moss. Now the reindeer moss has a different texture than that other moss that's more of like a grassy type situation. The reindeer moss has a little more body to it. Um, it's just different looking. You'll get a closer look in a, in a little bit. I'll show you the difference. A lot of times with these mosses, when they start to dry, they lose their color. So they will put some type of a dye or like a powder or something on them to give them a different color. So I'll show you a comparison in a minute, just how that works. If it gets on your hands, it will wash off. So don't be, don't be afraid of that. But certainly if you want to use some uh, gloves, you can do that for this part. I don't want anybody messing up a beautiful manicure. Now, I'm trying to make sure that I go all the way around my edges too, and any little spots that looks like as I was tapping it off, I left some little bald spaces. I wanna tuck that in there too. I want a good representation of the dark green, the lighter green, the brown, just all of the textures and the colors together. So that's what you see me doing here. For me, since this mirror doesn't lay flat on my table and it does have a lip, I can actually go over the edge of that lip and glue it down there also. It's just a real simple process. I did not want to edit all this out because again, a lot uh, of my feedback that I'm getting is that you prefer to see how I'm doing everything. So I just put it in here so that you can see. It is a little fast. Some people don't like that. Look at that mess. Look at it. Look at it but I left it in there for those who need it and who desire it, okay? Now, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, soft and spongy green. But now, see the difference? 
the Dollar Tree moss is a little more dry. The other one is a little more um, kind of damp or it's just softer. The texture is just softer. And I'm going to add that down into here. But it's got a green dye that's going to be everywhere. Everywhere. I, I assume it's a dye. It's a dye. Yeah, it's used to color it, so we want to call it a dye. But look at the difference. Look at all the textures. If you've ever seen moss on a tree or went through a, you know, a walk in the forest when there's actually been rain, you can see all the beautiful colors on a tree, on a tree branch. You know, when it gets a little cooler outside, we're going to do another little tour in my yard, and we're going to check out everything to see what's growing where. People seem to enjoy that, and I want to give you an idea of all the things that you can find, collect, to bring into your own home to use on projects that you like. This is not a fall specific or Halloween specific video. This is just simply a all year long decor video if this is what you like. And I definitely like it and my room is coming together nicely and I am absolutely loving it. It is a combination of like a dark cottage core and forest core and earthy and ugh, I just can't put a label on it. It's kind of like my crafting. I do a little bit of everything, right? I even do some crafts that maybe I myself might not use, but I know that there are people who've requested it. Look at that. Look, look at it. Look. Ooh, that's creepy. Yeah, it's creepy. It does, it does wash off completely easily with no scrubbing involved. Okay, so I'm just going to use this to try to get some of the little webs down, the little glue webs, because they're driving me absolutely nuts. It wouldn't look bad if you left them in, though, because it just would look like little spiders were living in there, and that would definitely be something that happens in nature. But I ought to get some of it out of there. And look at all this richness that we had left over. It did not go in the trash. Keeping it. I'm really stretching our dollar. All right, so we have a combination of some things that I thrifted. Actually, that chola I thrifted. My kids found that stick. This is uh, a little basket of lichens that I found and dried outside. I have some moth wings. Poor little critter didn't make it, but I found the wings so I can repurpose it. And then I have all types of turkey tail and shelf mushrooms and bark from a pine tree that fell. Beautiful pieces lots of texture. I even have an agate. I have two agates down in there. And then here's some that I more recently dried. And look at the difference in the color. These little mushrooms came from Timu. And then I've got some little acorns that are also fake. Um, a little tip, y'all. If you have something that's real shiny like this, just use a matte spray and spray it. It's going to bring that shininess down to give it a little more of a realistic look. So I've decided I want this chola to go down here in this big section. I love it. it. It was just made for this little part, I think. It fits perfectly there. I'll start off by using a little hot glue, and I am pushing down with some, some force. Now, I'm, I'm holding it down really tightly so that the glue will go through the moss and down onto the mirror. I'm also going to take my E6000, go under the sections that are touching, and then continue to hold it down. I don't want this to fall off at all. And it is not loose hanging off the moss. It is really in place. I took that other piece of wood and put it at the top. Yes, so far, so good. I knew I wanted to add the Spanish moss because one of the most beautiful things about the trees in my yard is the moss that hangs off of them and it just blows in the breeze. It is stunning. I absolutely love it, probably for the same reason that I love wind chimes. It's just, it shows you that even if you weren't feeling it, you can see that the wind is blowing, right? And you know that there's some change coming in the weather. And I love a stormy day. I love it. Love it, love it. Okay, so all I'm doing is here is it's just kind of adding some over the top. My original idea was to add some of those, I think it's called amaranthus uh, from Dollar Tree, but I used it all when I was doing my mantle. Um, my members will be able to see that mantle video, decorating video, coming up soon. Hopefully next week I can get that done for y'all. Okay, so a little E6000, a little bit of hot glue to put down the shelf mushroom right on top, tucked under that log. That's where I usually find them, on a log. So it works perfectly there. Something you should know about these mushrooms also is that you can cut them. 
they're like a really thick cork type texture when they're dry and you can just take a utility knife and just cut right through it if you need to make a flat spot so that you can glue yours together you can definitely use faux mushrooms if you would like and if you don't have mushrooms or like mushrooms you don't have to use these at all you can use pine cones you can use whatever you like all right now I'm just gonna put some of these together in twos and threes some will be alone just putting in there as they would be in nature I'm gonna grab some of my beautiful turkey tail and I'm just gonna tuck those down just using my thumb to press them down together I doubled that one up put one right on the inside I'm gonna add one right here at the end it almost looks like a slide doesn't it like that's the end of the slide that would have been cute in a fairy home okay I'm gonna take another big piece and I will put it here at the top and it is um, just gonna be right above that piece of wood and I am loving this these are so pretty to me I love all the different colors if you know what an agate is the rocks that are agates they have like a continual color pattern or shape that goes throughout it's just they're stunning and the turkey tail reminds me of that in the way they have the concentric um, shapes it is just so pretty all right so now I'm taking some of the dried lichen and I'm just gonna add that here and there they pretty much dry in the tree um, and they fall out when the branches fall that's how I get them I don't actually harvest these out of the tree I get them when they decide to give them up now again with the layering and you can see the mushrooms look much more realistic now I'm gonna take those little button looking mushrooms and just put those in ones and twos mm, I think I do one that has like three a little cluster of three I'll put some kind of sideways and then I will put some straight down into the moss so you can just see the top part just gives it a little variety makes it a little more interesting I'm gonna tuck them around the log obviously around my little chola and just here and there all over you can see I'm gonna add some to the top working in little groupings like the entire thing is a set of a bunch of different vignettes we have what's going on in the top we have what's going on the bottom you have the right side you have the left side you can make it exactly the same you can do it differently whatever your little heart desires because it's all about what's gonna bring you joy in your own home right right and of course we have to do that on a budget that's what we do on this channel with an exception of the Halloween tree that I did that one was a little bit overboard but that's for those of you who don't have any stores near you except for maybe a Dollar Tree you know that's what that option was about all right now I pulled these out of a little fern planter that I thrifted and I think there were like five pieces in there they're so pretty they're little and they're twisty and curly and they just look like little baby ferns to me I'm gonna tuck those all around that that log there so much life in the forest floor and up in the trees everywhere everywhere I'm gonna tell you there's nothing like it nothing like taking a walk in the woods looking out in the woods sitting outside taking your shoes off putting them on the ground and just getting yourself grounded just really kind of connecting with nature and clearing your mind and not playing on your devices just listening and feeling I love that I love it I don't take as much time to do it these days but I really when the weather starts to cool off I'm going to be doing that because I enjoy it so very much and it really changes my attitude and outlook for the day when I can do that so this beautiful piece I'm gonna cut off all these little pieces rather than using it as one I'll be using it in this project and I think I'm gonna use a couple of pieces of this in the next project we do but I don't recall we have to wait and see it's definitely an option I'll be carrying some of the things over from this project to go on the next project because I want them to be similar see I didn't want it there I thought I did but I decided not I just pulled it off before it glued all the way down or before the glue dried rather really quickly while you watch me do this I want to say a thank you to our newest channel members Sharon Pam Louise Deb Dawn Mel Pat and Sue Hale thank you very much for joining our channel memberships and I look forward to seeing you be sure that you check out our community post because I post every day for the members and I would love to be able to get to know you better and for each of y'all to get to know each other better
All right. For information, by the way, if you want to become a member, you can go down in the comment section or in the description box, rather, and get that information. And I just want you to know that if you're not a member and that's not something you want to do, that is totally fine. That is strictly for those who want a little bit more. Um, but you don't have to and you won't lose anything. You know, the quality that you've always found here, you will continue to find here. So no worries about that. All right. And then I thought, hey, let's throw some rocks in there. And I love these this little gravelly looking stuff that I got from Dollar Tree. You can get this in all kinds of colors. And I'm just going to put that down and apparently throw the spatula at it and then press it down to the glue. You can just kind of pick at it afterward to make sure that you have um, everything is stuck down in place. Then you'll add another little bit of glue and then you'll press it down into that glue. It's going to lock everything into place and you can just pick it up and tap it a bit and get the stray rocks out of there. And then if you wanted to do this further up and anywhere around the other part of your project, you certainly can. This is the final result and I'm very, very happy with it. I hope that you get some inspiration from this one and that you try something like this. You can always email me or tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you come up with. You can watch my videos on Monday and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for free. And I'll see you in the comments. Our next project is a moss skull display. All right, you've seen him in the Halloween videos, haven't you? Welcome to the channel. Isn't he cute? Then I have some Waverly antiquing wax, brush, a sponge, and check this out, y'all. I'm gonna take the center piece and that little plastic piece and a block of wood to make a base for this. Yep, it's just a scrap of wood that I had sanded down to use for whatever projects I needed. Now I'm going to put this in the middle but slightly backwards and I'm going to use some hot glue and then I'm going to use some staples to hold this in place because this needs to hold the weight of what we're going to be putting on the top. Yes. Now I can put some glue here around the ring and slide that right back on and it is the perfect fit because it was manufactured to hold the ribbon that way. All right, in the bottom of my skull, I am going to be making a hole. So I've got my little, this is like my little burning tool, and I'm going to use this, or it's a soldering, soldering iron, and I'm going to use this to make a hole and then start burning in a circle that will fit the diameter of that piece of twisted, it's actually vine, y'all. It looks like a stick, but it is actually a thick piece of vine that my husband found in the woods at our farm in Mississippi. So I'm going to use that today. That's just another one of those things that he knows that I collect and I just enjoy keeping that stuff because I know that I'll be using it in something. You know, I mean, honestly, I am that kind of person who I find joy in those things like that. It is, it's true about me. If anybody knows me in person, you will know that this is the truth about me. I can sit in a pile of rocks all day long and look for fossils and agates and honeycombs and I just I have a blast doing that. Okay, so now we have that hole the perfect size. I'm going to take, you can put the brown paint on the inside of the eyes and nose if you want. And I'm going to take antiquing wax and I am going to go down in all the depressed areas. And then all of these little fissures in the head, I'm going to go down that with the wax. I'm pushing it down into the plastic. I don't have to necessarily do the other part of the aging with the spray because it already is aged. It already has that look. So thankfully that step is done for me. Now there is a mark where the manufacturer put it together that is straight across the back. That is not a normal marking on the human skull. So I'm not going to focus on getting any down in there. I don't want to draw attention to that. In other words, you know what I'm talking about. Every little piece that's got like a crack around it or a depressed area or elevation, I am going to go over it with this wax. Pretty much I'm just going to paint the entire thing with this wax. The beauty comes in wiping it back. So I've got my dry towel. You can see where I've put it on. I didn't wait like a long time. I just grabbed my paper towel after getting it in there. And look at the difference that the wax makes down in all of those areas. I've taken that skull from that grayish color to a more natural aged bone color. I'm gonna go over it. And if you wanna know how I know what a bone looks like, um, I am a nurse. 
I'm a trained nurse. That's what my profession was before I became a YouTuber. So that's what it was. And I know a little bit about bones and human anatomy. All right. With that said, let's go around and keep doing this. He was biting my towel. Did you just see that? Bit the towel. He was trying to get it. I'm going to go around all of it. I don't want any of that gray to show, and I want this to be a very beautiful textured look. So I'm going to also go inside the mouth and on the inside of the jaw, any place that you can see them, because it'll be on a stand, and you can definitely see the, the uh, bottom of the jaw from the back side of the stand. All right, and it's just a matter of applying it, wiping it off, patting it off, rubbing it in. You're just going to layer it and then let it dry. So as much as you need, as much as you desire for your look, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Y'all, please don't be scared of the human anatomy. This is what we look like on the inside, pretty much. It's not exact, but you know, pretty much. Nothing to be scared of. God made us perfectly, perfectly. You don't have to be afraid. Okay, I'm not here to scare anybody. All right, so now I'm going to fill this little well up with some hot glue. This is going to help hold that beautiful, beautiful, curvy piece of vine in place. So I chose to put the curly section downward and use the longer part upward. You also, after you put your hot glue in here in the bottom, grab your E6000 if you need foam or anything else to lock it in to keep it nice and tight while it's drying, do that or it will dry crooked. While that is drying, I'm going to start with the moss on the face. I'm going to go into the eyes here with some of that moss. It's all mixed up. It's got a variety in there. And I'm going to go about halfway down the orbit, like halfway down, so that you can still see the black in there. And I'm going to shove this in here. Any place that it would look like naturally as, you know, pollen and spores and seeds fall on it, it would collect dirt. That's where things would grow. So that's why I'm trying to do it in a downward section. I hope that makes sense to you. Any little pockets. So like right here in the side, by the, I think blink, that's the uh, temporal bone. We're going to uh, go in that with some glue and then tap that moss in there. I'm going to do it all in there. Y'all, I either hear thunder or a loud truck. I'm hoping that it's thunder. But it could be my... Oh, that's definitely UPS, yeah. Okay, so I'm pressing this down all in here. Very nice. And then I'm just going to trim a little bit just to make it look a little bit, you know, neater. This type of moss doesn't hang. It's not Spanish moss, so I just want it to be nice and crisp. And then I am going to be using the top of the head as an area to decorate. And I am going to add little bit of hot glue at a time. It's actually a lot of hot glue because I really want to hold it in there. You take the head and just push it straight down into that bowl if I wanted to, but you know, afterthoughts. That was an afterthought. I'm going to press this down in there. You see my fingers are not protected, but I have so much. I'm picking up so much that I can't feel the glue underneath, so in a way the moss is protecting me. I'm just going to press it down, and then I want to try to make sure that the shape is somewhat circular and that it kind of makes sense uh, in the direction that the head is going to be standing on that the stand. And then this is what it will look like. I'm going to give it a little goatee, y'all. There's a little dip right here, so we're going to add a little bit of moss in this area, too. We're going to keep going with that whole idea. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. Yes. I like that. I think that is, that is nice. That is nice. And then I'm going to go down in here again where the jaws meet because there's a little depressed area. Now I'm going to start working on the bottom. Now some of this is going to be out of focus, but you can definitely still see what I'm doing here. I will fix that. My camera likes to focus on whatever's closest to me, so that kind of, that's why that happens. Now I'm going to add hot glue and I'm going to start placing this down. This is that same mixed up moss and as it runs low, I'll grab some more moss and mix it together so that I have a lot of different color. And then I'll start placing it down. There's going to be a lot of glue webbing here, a lot of it, in both of these projects actually. So be prepared for a mess, but it was a lot of fun. Okay. Pressing, 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 pressing. And I'm going to do this sort of where the back left and all the way through to the right front are going to be 
covered sort of at a diamond shape and then I will have two corners the other two corners will be covered in rock okay you can see what I'm doing here and you certainly cover the entire base with this if you would like whatever floats your boat right make it your own I'm simply here to bring you some inspiration and show you what you could do and then you make it your own now let's see if we cut correctly yes it's gonna fit I love that it is gonna slide down and fit nicely and then I can get it all glued into place I love that so pretty okay I'm gonna turn it upside down and then I will add some hot glue here feel free to get your E6000 at this point and put that in here you want to make sure you get your measurements right okay and there's a space right here behind the top the top jaw I'm gonna put some glue there so that it will stay in place keep it from rocking backwards because I want it to be stable while it dries now let's start working on the beautiful stand or vine stand that is holding this in place we're gonna go in little sections here and there on this this vine piece just gonna press it in tap it off a little bit and uh, there's quite a bit of dust and this could be an allergy trigger for some people so you might want to use a mask and eye protection when you do this I'm going to add here and there some of these stones that came from Dollar Tree mine are in black I could not find the bag that was multicolored that had the you know brown and beige and the different colors I couldn't find any in my store but the flat black ones I thought were perfect so I'm just going to use those and put those in place just fitting them in like puzzle pieces on the base you can see here the opposite corners this is just my preference you don't have to do it this way you could also put this on a live wood round if you would like whatever the look is that you're going for and then um, I just glued a rock to my finger y'all don't worry about the little glue mess you can get that off with your heating tool now I want to add this beautiful piece of fern I'm gonna I'm gonna curve the end here because I want something to give it like a foot or a stand to help it stay balanced and I'm just gonna tuck it under the edge of one of those rocks and it fit I didn't have to it didn't pop off and I didn't have to replace it I'm gonna add hot glue and then I'll use a little more of the rocks to kind of stack upward to give it a little bit of support and it looks very intentional and it looks like it is meant to be there so I've got some donkey tail moss down there I've got well not moss um, succulents I've got these beautiful purple succulents and then the one purple flower these all were thrifted but you can definitely get these something similar at Dollar Tree I didn't like the blue in this purple succulent so I went ahead and grabbed my uh, foliage green and just went over the top of the blue to make it look a little bit more like what we have going on here I've got a couple of extra pieces of the like the fern I'm saying that's a fern but I know that's not what that is it's probably a piece like a fir branch or something but I'm just taking those pieces off and I'm gonna use it like a I'll add a little bit of glue and I want three pieces together so now I've got my three pieces again using my stones to help prop it up I'll put the donkey tail down here and then another little piece of succulent right beside it the textures are going to be different different sizes different textures I like that the the ends of these are kind of a faded looking color I think that looks really nice with all of what's going on in this project then I'm going to just glue the flower down in the top the moss gives it something else to cling to it gives it something to hold it in place if you're wondering why I even put the moss on there because you can still see the moss it is still part of it and uh, yeah so I cut a little piece off of that of the smaller purple flowers and I put a section on the bottom you will see that soon I'll show it to you and then I'll just start adding this on just like a flower arrangement another little piece of donkey tail go up there and now we got to put some butterflies on we have a huge pack of butterflies that I got from Dollar Tree in the close to the gardening section and I love the orange but they have a variety of colors so the the orange and, and brown is what I chose you got to make sure that you have two of each of the same pattern and I'm gonna do four butterflies and they're gonna use two of the little butterfly cutouts a piece I'll take my glue stick 
and I am going to glue them back to back so that you have two fronts and when you glue it down you don't see any white it just looks like one butterfly how about that little trick it's probably been done before but you know I love doing it I've never seen anybody do it but it's probably been done before okay so I'm gonna go around this and I'm gonna go around each one of those until I have four beautiful butterflies and no they are not an exact match but there's a way to fix that so don't worry about that I'm gonna show you what to do if those types of things get on your nerves don't worry there is a way to disguise the white I suppose you could cut it I'm not I, I don't feel the need to do that type of a fussy cut I mean you've really got to get in there and I'm pushing it wearing my glasses as it is. I am really not going to do that. Whatever's easier for you, though. Okay, so I'll press them together. And then I am going to take my cherry furniture repair marker. Use whatever color you want. And I'm going to go around the edges. I'm just going to turn it right along here and just pull it right along the edges. All the way around that butterfly. That is going to cover up the white. And I think that it really gives it a crisper look it really gives it a nicer look everything is kind of blended together and it looks more realistic I mean obviously it's a paper butterfly but and, and if you don't like the look of that you don't have to use the paper butterfly you can use a sticker you can use a 3d sticker if you want to you can use a faux butterfly the ones they make out of feathers and lace and mesh and whatever but for me I like these because they have a, a very beautiful coloring and look see the difference so we want all of them to look the exact same way. And they really do look pretty when we get them put in place, I think. Around and around and around we go. Who's excited that we are in September right now? We are in September, folks. Yes. Okay, now look how pretty. Now all you gotta do is pinch it toward the middle. And then when you bend it it is going to be beautifully a butterfly don't you love it all right I'm gonna take that little folded butterfly and I'm going to find a place that I want him to rest I'm gonna put a piece on this little I don't know what this is called this is like a lily pod I added that um, that's not something that y'all saw me put in there and a couple of little pieces of like a multicolored scraps of eucalyptus that is in there as well you can just add to your little heart's desires pretty much scraps so you know you just put in there whatever you like I like for my things to kind of coordinate though so they look like they're at least in the same season I'll put one up here in this beautiful little feathery piece and just press it in the middle I don't want to cover it in glue and of course one of them has to be lighting on top of this succulent absolutely has to be right on top of the succulent I'm just going to hold it in place. And then I'll fold the other one and put it on top of that little donkey tail. Now we have four beautiful butterflies. And here's a look of what I came up with. I added a little, some little weeds back there to the back left. Everything just stays together. It just goes together. It looks like it belongs together. And I... I'm obsessed this is so beautiful to me but if you don't like skulls think of all the other things you could use you could use a raven here you could use an owl if you wanted to use an owl whatever you have if you've enjoyed this video I would really love to have you subscribe we do budget-friendly unique DIYs on this channel and I would love it if you enjoy it to let me know by clicking the like button so I can continue to put out the things that you love to see on this channel sharing it is another way to show your love and appreciation it also helps with the growth of my channel and the bigger my channel gets the more money I have to put back into the channel to bring you more creations like these okay I know that somebody is going to recreate some of these you got to create something I would love for you to email me or tag me on Instagram so that I can see what you come up with the first project today will be our spooky romantic wall decor 
All right, I am going to use some of my 2X Ultra Matte Paint in black. Any type of a metal finish paint and a chip brush. This beautiful paper from Dollar Tree. Gorgeous wrapping paper. I'm going to use something thick as a backing. I just have a piece of very, very thick black paper. And then this frame that we used last year to make a Halloween DIY. We're going to use it again. All right, so I laid this down. What you see on the inside is the, the inner circle is the size of the inside of that frame. I wanted to give it at least an inch above that so that I could put this over the back and give it sort of a shadowy look underneath. So you can see my struggle here. These are very sharp scissors, but I am really, this is how thick this paper is. Maybe a very thick cardstock. So just continue around. And this is the oval that I have when I'm done. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's going to be on the back. I'm going to lay it down on top of my paper. And you know Dollar Tree paper is very thin, so just be careful. Um, my usual technique of dragging the scissors will not work on this. And then I am going to place this paper over, just making sure that I have my pattern somewhat in the middle. Um, if that doesn't matter to you, then you can just totally not even worry about that part. Okay, so now is the time of year to get your glue sticks on sale. Go to Walmart. They probably even have some on clearance because most of the kids have started back to school. Here in the South, anyway. I like the purple because it shows me exactly where I'm putting down my glue. And that is important because I want to be sure that I can see where I've been and make sure every area is going to be covered. I want a good, good grip from the glue onto this very thin paper. Nothing should be coming apart. Do it all the way to the edges. Okay, so then I am going to flip this over on top of the paper. This is why you want a little extra on your edge so you can get it exactly where you want it. Because like I said, fragile paper, you don't want to do anything that's going to stress or tear it. Okay, so I've pressed it down, and now I'm going to take my little squeegee, and this is a Mod Podge squeegee, and it's kind of a flexible, rubbery type material. It works really great for this on fragile pieces of paper because it won't tear anything. Well, so far, it hasn't torn anything. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to make sure that I burnish it down all the way to the edges making sure that if there are any little lumps of glue that I've worked those all out to the outside. That way we don't have wrinkles and bubbles. I will trim off a large amount of this to make it a little more manageable. And I like the edge when I use a sanding block. So this is how I'm gonna get that nice clean edge. Just using a sanding block. Y'all have seen this done before and I do it all the time. But if you want to just use your scissors and fussy cut all the way around, you can do that too. Because really, once you get this backing on, you're not going to see your edges. This is just a personal preference for me. I am just going to continue around, make it nice and smooth all the way around. And it kind of gives it, you know, it adds to the age look of it when you kind of fray it off like that. Okay, so here is this painted in the beautiful matte black. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna make it even more gorgeous. There's so much detail in here that you can't see, right? Well, we're gonna fix that up. So there are some screws in the back of this, assuming that this was probably a, maybe a picture frame or a mirror at one point. I'm not exactly sure, but I know that this frame itself is like a resin, very flimsy, very lightweight, which makes it convenient when you go to the thrift store and you're buying by the pound. This didn't weigh very much at all. Okay, I took the screws out because I need something to rest my backing on and I can make a wider surface to put glue down if I use these little building blocks. So they happen to be the perfect width to go down in that little channel and rest over the areas where the screws were. So we'll have a nice flat surface so that we can apply glue. Now just in case, go ahead and paint those black if your frame is black if it's white then paint it white that way when you uh, look at it from all directions you don't see the wood block under there you don't want to see the mechanics of it right 
So you're going to add glue to each of those sections and then pop your frame back on. And this is how it's going to look so far. I want to be sure I give good before pictures so that you can really tell the difference when we spruce it up. So I'm going to use this Rich Espresso on the frame and I'm going to use this tarnished silver, it's like an alcohol spray. I think you use it mainly for crafting like paper crafts, but it gives such a nice patina and aged look that I like to use it on my older projects. I also, uh, or the things that I want to appear antique, I also use this when I'm doing bones um, to make the bones look, you know, aged in a proper way. Okay, so when I get it on there, I'm just going to dry it with my little tool here. Get it all dry. I don't want anything smearing. So here's that rich espresso I was talking about. I have bronze colored paints, but I don't have anything that looks in the, it doesn't look like the depth that I want in a bronze. And I think that this over the black is going to be like the perfect solution for that. And you can just tell me what you think. I think it definitely looks bronze, like an aged bronze. If you use that chippy brush and you just start going side to side, side to side, and sweeps all the way across. I'm not trying to get down in the cracks in this situation. This, the black is gonna be down in all the spaces and this more of a metallic color is gonna sit on the high points. So it makes it look like it is sort of a tarnished look. Look how beautiful that metallic paint just brings out all the detail and the beading, the little filigree on the side, the shape of it is just highlighted, uh, in my opinion, with this. It's so pretty. I had originally pulled out a, like a tarnished silver paint to do this, but since I'm changing my room into something that is more of a dark and moody theme, I thought I could use this in my room. So I wanted to make sure that it fit into kind of the aesthetic that I'm going for. Which, by the way, is not very textbook dark and moody. It's definitely not dark academia because I don't have books everywhere, but you know, I'll be sharing some of that stuff with you guys as I go along. Now, see now the paper is too stark white and we want this to look a little more luxurious, more like a damask. So I am going to just kind of brush this all over and I've barely got any paint in the brush, just barely. Put it in the, the centers of the little floral pieces uh, along all of the details. I want to go around the outside where there's like a lip that's like almost an inch between the front of the frame and the backing that I'm working on right now. And it gives it a shadow around the edge, which to me is so beautiful. I love it. It looks old and, and vintage. Just, I love it. So now I've just got a bath sponge that I've torn into pieces. I like to use it when I'm doing different techniques with paints. And uh, I really like this. You just, when you dip in, be sure you offload some and then just kind of twist that in your hand back and forth to change the pattern if it's something that is very obvious. Like if I was putting a very dark color, there's no way I would want to pounce it in the same pattern. Because then you would see that there was a pattern and that's not how aging works, right? So now I'm gonna go back over it. And if you get too much of a color on there for your what you wanted, you know, maybe you, you make a boo-boo and it's not exactly what you're looking for. Go back over it with some gray. Easy. All right, now we got some skeleton arms from Dollar Tree. I'm playing around to see because I know I want these hands to be together in some way. And they will clasp. You know, you can put them together like this. It's pretty nice there. I know that I want to do this on that frame somehow. So I'm just thinking about it. Okay, I'm going to take this satin paint here. This is heirloom white. I absolutely love this color. And I'm going to spray paint those bones. They're going to dry thoroughly. That's only one coat the front, one coat the back. Then I'm going to take this spray and I'm going to start spritzing this on here. This is going to give, again, that aged look that I like. And it's going to give it a more of a realistic look. Now, I could speed right through all of this because some people don't want to be bothered watching the process they just want to see how it ends but for those of you who watch my channel who do these things on your own um 
because you can't maybe you can't find the type of decor that you really enjoy so you want to do your own then you need to see exactly how to do it right and I don't want to rush you through it and feel like you're overwhelmed and you can't do it because you absolutely can do this okay so there'll be very little increase in speed here I want you to be able to see what we're doing so I'm gonna spray that on I'm gonna pat pat it off do not rub because it will make the entire bone gray and that's not the that's not the idea you want to let it dry in between layers yes this process does take a little time but you can put it in front of a fan or if you don't have a lot of humidity put it in a direct sun outside and help these things to dry so once I have enough of the spotting on there to my taste I'm gonna start building my layers of antiquing wax the areas that would normally catch grunginess and dust and dirt are gonna be where all those small bones are so I'm gonna go in there and just darken those areas I know that I want those low spots to hold some color so I'm just gonna tap this on if you prefer using a chalk paint uh, for your projects you can do that too but beware that when you start fooling around with putting any moisture on chalk paint it will start to um, flake off or lift so just you know keep that in mind that's why I prefer a uh, spray paint for this okay so now it's just again I'm going in all the spaces all of the little dark spaces I'm making them even darker and I'm just going to build up slowly um, you can see already how it's beginning to look a little more aged I'll do some wiping with my sponge on top of here and if you don't have the antiquing wax remember there is a recipe I wouldn't even say it's a recipe I just tell you how you can use coffee to stain uh, things while you're crafting coffee or tea so I mean you, you can definitely do it that way if you prefer but I've, I've had this bottle of antiquing wax forever and I'm still I'm still using it all the time and there's a lot left in there so you let these layers dry in between otherwise you're just smearing around the same paint and that that's just kind of a waste of your time and your product so just continue along I'm going back over where the joints are and where those little bones are and in between the fingers because I want to show some shadow I don't want everything to be comical in this this is not like a funny Halloween this is more of a living a spooky life situation here or if you do prefer the dark and moody something like this would be perfect and in fact all the little projects that I do in this video today are going to be appropriate all year long but you can definitely use these at Halloween if you like so now I've gotten my sponge and I'm gonna start just stippling that on I'm just pretty much just popping it on here and there twisting the brush or the sponge rather with that antiquing wax and then pouncing it up and down I don't want to rub off anything that I've already put on there I'm going around the edges of the bone and I'm also gonna go um, making sure I go in between the fingers now the back side of the hand and bone you don't necessarily have to do because you won't see that but definitely the sides this is not a difficult process right it may take a little bit longer to do to achieve but you know you can always work on different projects in between while your items are drying that's what I always try to do and then when I get ready to edit I just splice everything together in a way that would make sense to somebody who's watching it so if you do want to show this entire bone or you're not exactly sure how you're gonna lay it down go ahead and extend that over just a little bit too much glue uh, no too much wax <laughs> on the fingers will make it where you can't glue it down to your surface and I'm going to need to secure it in some way but you can use mounting tape for that so you know there's a way to get around everything but look at the bones now compared to how they were when we first started this is definitely a big difference now once they're completely dry I'm gonna take them over to my frame now if these bones were more narrow I could tuck them right inside the frame in that little gap that I was talking about I could do them like this and put them together or I can cross them over one another and that's what I decided to do and I'm using mounting tape so I'm gonna use a little bit of that mounting tape right behind the where the bone begins to get narrow and I'm gonna press it down onto that beaded area 
and then I'll go to the other side. And what makes it convenient is the shape of the frame has little pieces on it that are symmetrical on both sides. So I can count down those and know exactly where to put the other bone so that they're even. This mounting tape is really nice. You can definitely get it something similar to it. Alien tape, I believe somebody told me is what it's called. And you can get it at Walmart. So I'm just going to go in with my glue and put it together. I don't want the glue to necessarily be showing. So if you if you do get any glue on the outside, you know, try to get it out there really quickly so you don't tear your paper. And I'm just going to flood a little bit of glue between the joints of the fingers so that it catches the other hand and it can dry. But you can certainly use your mounting tape here if you want to as well. Now I want to put a very beautiful romantic arrangement on the inside. So I have, uh, when I was thrifting recently, I found two beautiful roses. This, this big purple rose and then there is a rose bud as well. I am going to just poke these right into the framework of those clasp hands. I'm not going to be too concerned about, you know, putting foam or anything in there. We're just going to glue it in. I don't want this to be a big, busy arrangement. I want this to be something that uh, is pretty simple, but still elegant, beautiful. These dahlias are from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut these off. And then all I'm doing right now, I'm not using glue. I'm just pushing these around on the frame to see how I want to arrange it. I've got some of those black leaves out of there. I'm gonna use those too. Uh, later on, I do add some purple leaves. You'll see that in the end screen. And you'll use the same process with gluing it down, you know. So this is why we don't glue them first. I'm going to move things around a little bit and decide how I like them. And then I can add my glue. I think it looks much better like that. So maybe the lady of the house uh, is a bride. Hmm. Maybe she's in love. Maybe she loves gardening. Who knows? But she's represented right here. And that beautiful, beautiful Dollar Tree paper is what inspired this entire look. Yes, just a roll of paper. But I knew it had to be prettied up and used in a project for you all who love your everyday spooky decor. Now again, I'm going between those fingers and I'm just kind of flooding a little bit of glue on all the flower stems that are down in there. And then I just individually glue down the, the black ones there, the black leaves. I've got some gorgeous, this is like a velour or velvet ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby. And I got it for 50% off, I think beautiful ribbon and I knew that I wanted to use this. It's in the Christmas section but I knew I had to have it for spooky decor. So I'm just going to do a very simple bow and I'm going to cut this off. If you don't want a bow for your little bouquet, you do not have to have a bow. But I really wanted to add this fabric. It just gives another little bit of texture and interest to the project and it's all about, you know, making it your own and so I did add in this little ribbon. You could also put something in the middle of the ribbon. If you wanted to put a spider or rhinestone of some sort in the middle, that would be pretty too. I think, yeah, I think I am very happy with this and I think it is the look that I was hoping for. Everything looks good together. You could always brush a little bronze over your leaves if you want to, but I don't have to have everything matchy-matchy. You can come watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays. It's 6 p.m. It is free to subscribe. We'd love to have you as part of the family and talk to you in the comments. The next project is a creeping vine candelabra. I found this oh, at the Goodwill's bins. I cannot believe that this was going to be just passed over by everybody. When I saw it, I thought, oh yes, that's going in my bedroom. I'm going to clean it up and give it a makeover. So I've got some wipes, and I'm going to decide whether I want to use this Rich Espresso again, or if I want to attempt to change it up a little and use a little bit of Martha Stewart's paint in a bronze color. The bronze to me is just pulling a little too copper. 
I don't mind copper, but I want all these pieces to be something that can be used together and all look nice together. So I am going to kind of do it my way. Definitely do it your way. And if you're going for more silvers, instead of using the bronze or the espresso that you see me using, just switch it up for the paint that you choose. All right, so I'm going to just use the top of this to decide which paint I like best. And you remember what I said about being a messy crafter? Well, yes, I'm finger painting in it. I think I like the darker one. I just like it. It's richer looking, and I don't want this to be brassy at all. So this color is going to be perfect for me. I'm grabbing a chippy brush here. You can use the same one you used on the other one. I didn't even have to paint this. It was already gorgeous after it was wiped off so I'm just going to just touch this up I'm gonna add this all over again I like to start off lightly and then I just kind of look at it and decide whether or not I want to add on it's just for me easier to add to it than take it off either way you know if you make a mistake you can definitely fix it so I am trying to make sure that when I dip in that paint I don't leave any a, uh, like puddles on the brush. I don't want any heavy, heavy, heavy amount on there. So that's why I tap it all off. I try to tap it off so that it leaves the same amount in the brush all the way across. And then I use a couple of different ways that I move the brush. Uh, you saw me do big brush strokes, kind of slow, and then as I'm adding on more, I'll move the brush side to side uh, quickly, and that gives it a little bit better of a coverage, but also keeping it muted, which is what I like. I hope that made sense to you when I said it that way. I hope that made sense. But the finish is just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I can't bring myself to do the brasses and the, the golds just just yet in my crafting journey. But most definitely, this the bronzy colors and the coppers, that's where my heart is. I just, I love warm, earthy tones and this is just, oh, this is beautiful. This is so beautiful. And of course, it's going to need an equally as beautiful candle to go on top, right? We don't want to let this frame down by putting something on there that does not serve it well. So this is a two pack of candles that are battery operated. Your double A's. Get your batteries wherever you want. These came from Target Dollar Spot. I assume they had a $5 sticker on them. And uh, I got them at either Goodwill or Dirt Cheap. I can't remember. And then I'm going to take that spray, that same alcohol spray, and I'm spraying it on this waxy finished candle. And it sticks on there just fine. It really does. And as far as the spray where I got it from, I found it in some scrapbook and stuff at Goodwill, so I don't even know where it comes from. So this is what it will look like. The next project is going to be an aged bronze owl. If you guys have been with me a while, you know we used this owl in a red and black arrangement last year. I'm going to use him again. Now he was originally spray painted, but I'm going to go over him now with some black chalk paint and I'm going to mat it down some more. I'm going to give it more depth by making it darker because it just, I didn't spray it all the way through. This is a, originally was a white owl and I do not know where it came from, but just substitute whatever you have that you want to use. You can use an owl, a bat, a crow, a raven, um, anything that says dark cottage core to you, if that's, you know, what you're going for, then go ahead and use that maybe a little more on the goth side. I'm gonna make sure that he's thoroughly dried all over and then I'm gonna address his eyes. Put on my spectacles to address my eyes. Y'all remember last year when I did him I didn't do anything to his eyes. I left him completely black. Well so many people made suggestions on how to make these eyes just pop and look gorgeous and I decided that today I would give him some beautiful glowing eyes. So here he is, and I'm putting on that rich espresso right into his eyes with a little brush, and I'm just kind of chasing that shape out with that small brush. See, I'm taking my time. I'm not speeding this up. So you can see, it takes me a while too. 
and then trying to maintain that shape inside this other eye. And then you can always clean it up if you make a mess. Just take your time. If you have a paint pen and that's easier for you to use on this type of detail work, just use those. And then I just use my finger if I get a little too much and just tap it off. Looks fine. You can always go back over it with a little black chalk paint once it is completely dry or black permanent marker. All right, we're going to give it a minute or two for those beautiful eyes to dry. And then I am going to start making him look beautifully aged. Now you can see, look at that. Look how much. I didn't get enough paint off of there because I'm working on a tiny little surface and I didn't pat the paint out right. But you don't have to worry because there's a way to fix it and I will show you how to fix it shortly. All right, again, adding on, brushing off, adding on, brushing off. And you can see that on his, there, I think it's on his chest maybe, there's a spot that is just too dark. I'm gonna fix it with some black paint. See there on his chest and then on his head. You can leave it like that. You know, if you wanna leave it that way, you can certainly leave it that way, but I wanna tone it down just a bit because I'm trying to give it like the hint of it without just being crazy, crazy with it. So I'm trying to brush it out just a little bit and if you can't brush it out enough, go ahead and grab a little bit of your black chalk paint on a smaller brush, tap it off, and then just kind of use it to blend it in. Like you blend your makeup on your jawline, just blend it in. And then if you get done with the process and you think, I hate this, let it dry and paint completely over it. Not a problem. I just knew he had to be part of this family. I knew he needed a makeover and he needed to be with this set of Dollar Tree paper items that we put together. Had to be. Absolutely had to be. He fits in perfectly with the set. All right. The next project is going to be a bronze pedestal candle. So here's the other candle, the shorter one of the two. This is a jar lid, which I painted with black chalk paint. Here is a candle sleeve or a hurricane. And then a thrifted glass candle holder. I also have a little bit of that paper from Dollar Tree. I'm going to first use some Goo Gone or alcohol or acetone, whatever you want to use, to get off the writing on the bottom, and then you're going to wash it with soap and water and thoroughly dry it. The back of this paper has lines on it and a grid on it, which makes it perfect for you to do these types of crafts. They're really going to help you out with that paper. So I'm just going to kind of measure by laying it down. I'll cut off an even amount to wrap all the way around the back of the candle. And then right along the edge of the paper, there is like a, a print line. I'm gonna cut that off too. I did consider that when I was measuring the length to put it on the, the candle. So I'll just trim that all off. And then here's our piece of paper. Get your design the way you like it. I'm gonna take my little hurricane here roll it. If I have a little overlap, that's great. That's what I'm going for. You don't want a lot, so trim it down where it just goes over maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch over. I'll use my double stick tape that I happen to get from Dollar Tree. Press it down on the glass. This way we're not waiting on Mod Podge to dry. We're not worrying about wrinkles. This is the perfect way to do this. And then if you want to change it later, you can change it out easily. I'm carefully pressing that down into half of where the tape is, leaving the other half of the tape exposed to stick this page on. Now I had it a little bit crooked, so I had to adjust just a little, and that's okay. I had a little tear on the back side, but it didn't tear through, thank goodness. And I'm just gonna press that down. And trim off if you have a little extra tape, you know, hanging over, you can trim it off. Then you can grab the sanding block and get it right close to the edge, just like you would any other project. It, just like it was if it was a piece of wood. Just be sure you hold on to it good so you don't drop and break it. I'm gonna do this all over the top, and then I'm gonna go along and do this on the bottom as well. I don't want anything hanging over because I want this to be rich and elegant looking. Look how pretty. 
This paper is beautiful. So here's our clean candle. I'm going to use this as the top. And this is, like I said, it's just a jar, a jar lid. We want this to appear to be one piece. So we are going to stick it together. All of my E6000 glue was clumped up and dried. If you have tips on how to keep that stuff from doing that, please tell me because I have so many tubes I had to throw away because I can't use them anymore. So I grabbed this super glue from Dollar Tree, questioning, questioning whether or not it was actually going to hold these two together, but I gave it some time. This is a little multi-pack you can get at Dollar Tree, and would you look at that? It won't even wobble. Perfect. So I'm going to grab that chalk paint. This is just a rich black, and I'm going to tap it off. And I'll use this little pouncer to go all the way around my edge. I'm just rubbing this on. If you have makeup, the little makeup sponges, you could use those also. Use the flat edge. I'm just going around the edge of the white, the edge of the glass, so that it looks like one piece. And then you can pick your little hurricane shade up, and you can extend it a little bit down the sides just to continue that aged look that we're going for. Okay, so I got the top. Now I'm gonna kind of smear it on the side a little bit, make it look old. It makes that print stand out with that rich black next to it. And we're gonna do the bottom too. See how that just really finishes it off? I love that. I love that edged look like that. So we're going to let it dry just like that. And then the process that we used on the inside of the frame, we're going to use the same process here and make this beautiful and rich looking as if it has been in an old home on the walls forever. My niece does Sims games and she did a build that recently had some black wallpaper in it that was Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I don't want my room to be that dark. I want it to be a little more foresty looking, you know? But uh, yeah, I sure appreciate the look of it. That is stunning. All right, once you get the look you want, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray this on now after I've done the paint. You can do it either way. You're not gonna hurt yourself either way. And I'm just spraying it on top of a towel that's a, you know, just a rag I use here in my studio. If you have any runny spots, just tap them off. If it runs on your page, that's totally fine. It's part of the aging process, right? So look how nice this looks together. It looks as though it was made as one piece. And I love that it now looks this black color, which really brought it together. And now we're going to add that espresso. Again, I'm starting off slow. So I'm going to start on the bottom in that rim right there on the edge and just flick that back and forth. I'm not looking for a solid painted line. It's just, again, brush strokes. And I guess there is sort of a pattern to it, you know, but I'm not trying to get like an even amount. We want it to look like it aged this way. I'm gonna go back and forth on the rounded parts just to keep that rounded look it just makes sense that it would wear in that way when it is wiped and clean. Then I'm going to go around all the beautiful curves. Y'all, I ordered lamps, new lamps for my room, and they have the amber, like a teardrop in the inside of the, you know, the standing part of the lamp that makes a night light. So you can turn the light on and off, and you can also use the amber night light. Oh! That's going to be perfect for fall when I am watching movies in here in my room by my hot billy stove. <laughs> Can't wait. Okay, so I've built it up about this much. And what I do is turn it back and forth. And I add more on in the spaces where I feel like it needs more. And it shows me if I've left anything off, go ahead and address that and cover that. So that's what I'm doing here until I get the coverage that I like. And then of course you are going to let it dry after you do that. I don't need necessarily with the process that I'm using to color the top of it. It just didn't feel right to me not to do it. So I went ahead and um, worked on that top too. 
and I'm trying to kind of keep it circular. Now, if the sleeve that you have doesn't fit perfectly over the top, mine fits like perfect. There's no extra lip, nothing. Um, I am going to secure that down with some hot glue and I do it in four different places. I let that dry thoroughly. I mean, you really, really need to let the glue dry. If you use the candle top that is bigger, a little bit bigger than your sleeve, you'll be better off, I think. But look at it with the candle on the inside, and we didn't have to do anything special to the actual candle insert because we have this beautiful frame. Okay, y'all, look at the beautifulness. They all look so good together. I really like these projects. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you're not already a member of our family. And if you like the video, it tells me that I need to make more content just like this. Also, if you really enjoy this video, consider sending it to somebody and sharing it with them who might also enjoy this type of content. We want more people who are desiring these items and these DIYs to be able to see them. So if you know somebody who enjoys them, there seems to be kind of a missing, I don't know, like a missing area where people are not finding what they want and what they ideally would like to have in their home. I want to be able to show it to them. At least give them some options, right? We all want to find some joy in our home. And although it looks different to different people, you know, what brings you joy is not going to be maybe what brings the next person joy, but that is okay. It's a personal thing, right? I would love to hear your comment about these crafts. If you are someone who lives the spooky life, not only in October, but all year long, I would love to know your opinion of this and if this was something that you would put in your home. Okay. So we're going to take some flowers, whichever one you want to use out of your stash. I have some of these beautiful purple cosmos and some of those little silk roses with the rhinestones. I'm going to use some black tulle. This beautiful sign that I got from Timu. It's just a little fabric sign. Gorgeous. And then this I got it dirt cheap, but you can see that it was from Target. Okay. You're going to need some little hangers for the back if your sign doesn't come with it, and this one did, so I won't have to worry about that. Now these signs, so far, and I've used a few of these, they are two-sided, which is wonderful because not only do they look better and more substantial, but you can take these apart and then use the same print two times. Talk about save your money. Yeah. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. Not at all. I just really, really like this beautiful flag so I'm gonna just kind of pull it apart and then you know you can have rough edges like this on your project if you want or you can take the side that still has the little folded seams and that's what I'm gonna use for this one I'll put the other side for another day and then I'll try to get the right spacing on here for the sign and I'm just going to glue it down I like to start like in the middle once I get my placement right so I'm not losing my placement now I'm double checking there before I press it down. Then I'll go around the bottom and it does overhang on the sides so I'll just kind of wrap it around on the sides and uh, glue it down. And then we'll do the same process on the top. Once it's all down I just want to trim it out. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. Or perhaps you could set it up a little higher on your sign but I think the embellishments make it look nice little more substantial so we're gonna go with that I'm just using some of this uh, it's just a little roll of like burlap uh, meshy type ribbon I'm gonna use that here y'all if you hear my daughter coughing in the other room we have had a dry spell sort of in Alabama believe it or not because it's always seems to be raining here but we have and it's been enough to let the weeds and all that kind of stuff thrive and my husband cut the grass yesterday and then she went swimming so she was out there and all that pollen and seeds grass seeds and all that kind of stuff so she got kind of a cough this morning but she's fine so no worries about that but just in case you hear some more noise that's what it is so now it's all trimmed out look how nice and beautiful that looks you can leave this alone just as is if you like something that is simple 
or you can add some embellishments like I am. We're going to take a nine inch fold and we're just going to flip it over a few times. So that's one fold, two, three. Y'all, this does not have to be precise and you don't have to use as many folds as I do. But the more folds that you make, the more fluffy this is going to be. So that is totally up to you. And like I mentioned before, you can skip this part. And then you can just trim it off when you get it as long as you want it. Now I like to use jute most of the time, but this is so frail. I figured if I put jute on here and kind of um, cinched it really tight that it might kind of cut through it. So I just decided to use another piece of this tool and just cut a little strip and I'll use that to go around the middle. Now you can get tool at Dollar Tree now, so if you want to do that, you can certainly do that. Now I'm going to flip it over, and we're going to do this just like we would any old bow that we do. Okay, so if you're not used to working with the tool, it is not a big deal. We're not doing anything real fancy here with this tool. I just like the wispiness of it, and I feel like it's really that black, wispy, almost kind of a fog or hazy type thing. It's, it's very... Edgar Allan Poe-ish, if you will. So, if we're going to go with the raven here, I want to continue that and make it look nice and fluffy and, you know, old and cute. So, I'm just going to go through the ends here, and if you don't want to go through the ends and give it kind of little jaggedy cuts, you don't have to. You can always leave it in a loop but I like the idea of being able to pull this out in all kinds of directions. I'm just tucking this, the little string we made from the tool. It's, it's over and under that top ribbon because the top one, I did not glue it straight down. It's not glued down yet. I wanted to have a little space where I could tie something to it. Just a little extra security. Now you can see that the raven is almost like a violet kind of color. It's coming off as like a violet and there are some other things in the picture that have that purplish look. But rather than calling that a problem because it's not solid black, we're going to go with it because I love the red and the purple and the black and the way this looks together and I love these Cosmos. I've used these um, in projects last Halloween and was very satisfied with them and they came from Dollar Tree but the quality is fantastic. So I'm just going to cut off a little tab thingies that stick into the wire pieces. I cut those off so that this can be more flat and I'm just going to glue the leaves straight onto the back of the flower. Always, always when you get these layered flowers, make sure that you rotate them a little bit because they're in layers so you can you can kind of splay them out a little bit rather than have them all clumped up and only looking like four leaves. We don't want to do that. See how you kind of you can kind of twist it around so you get to fill in all those gaps. See what I'm doing here? Very, very easy just a little bit of hot glue to put the leaves back on and then it's trimming off my the little stem part. See this little part? We're going to cut that little plastic off because now everything is connected together so it's not going to fall apart. And I want to add another one on this side. You see the butterflies on this picture? This is gorgeous. A little more romantic spooky. What do you think? So yeah, as I was saying, this is for those of you who love that spooky lifestyle and who want to enjoy these mystical and spooky looks through your house all year long because not everybody is into that and that's fine. And if you're not ready for this, you know, just save it and you can come back and watch this video at the end of summer or in fall or in October, whatever you would like to do. So this is the final look, and oh my goodness, I love it. My bow, believe it or not, is a little too big up here, or my little fluffy thing. Just trim it down a little bit, fluff it out, kind of like bat wings or moth wings. So you can also cut into these pieces of tool to give them a jagged edge, kind of snip at it. Pulling at it doesn't really work. Uh, I tried that, but that, that didn't really work. So cut it where you can. Oh, y'all love this. I absolutely love this print, and I'm so inspired by this print. I think you'll see. We have another project where I'm going to be using the Raven. Hope you like this one.
This I ordered from Timu because I thought he was beautiful, but I do not like that wood he's standing on. It does not look real. This actually would hang on a wall, I do believe. It's got that little hanger port in the back, but you get a good look at him. Love all the, the colors they did on him there. I'll use a chocolate brown and a buff, and I'm going to use some spray paint. Spray paint is going to be used for the foam, the bottom, and the cage. This is going to be the bottom. It's actually a sign, but it fits perfectly. Going to use a stem to cut flowers off of, probably the Cosmos that we used. This is about 16 inches for reference. I did get this at the thrift store. So now I'm going to go spray paint it. Foam too now, foam too. Now, while that's drying, we have to address this stick that he's standing on or this branch that he's standing on because I'm not digging those unnatural colors. Not for this. So I'm going to take that chocolate brown and go all over where it is brown. And I'm being very careful. This is a rounded tip brush. So I can get into all those little cracks. I can push up to where the other color is, and I don't have to worry about making a big mess. I just feel like I have a little more control. If you like yours that way when you buy it, you certainly can keep it that way. I think I paid like $4 for this. Not really sure. Gorgeous, though, going along with our raven theme. And then everywhere that it is that yellow color, I am going to put that buff color. I'm going to dry it, just because for me dry time is important so I can get these projects out to y'all. You can set it aside and let it dry if you like. I'm going to take a really skinny tip brush and go over his eyes. I want those to be black. Black is a dark soul. You know, we're talking about Halloween here. We're real playful here. Okay? I don't go for any of that dark stuff or negativity. Y'all know I stay positive. But this is such a beautiful theme, I think. So romantic and beautiful. Okay, and you know I like my old stuff. I like that old vintage stuff. I'm 50, so I'm into the old stuff. Now I've brushed most of the paint off of that brush, and I'm just sort of dry brushing over the little high spots. And now that looks a whole lot more like a stick, in my opinion. So now I need to put this foam down on this wood. I decided to use some of this little nano tape stuff. This is the ones that I got from Timu. I'm just going to peel that off, stick it down on that foam, there we go. It's a really thick gel-like tape. Um, it doesn't want to stick to the foam by itself, naturally. Nothing ever does, right? But I'm going to push it down into that. I decided, you know what, we're just really going to try to make this work. Because the hot glue would kind of melt it, so we're just going to try this and see how it works. And so far, very satisfied with it. It has not come out of place. And I'm going to put pressure on it and hold it there for you know, a minute or two so that it really locks down on that wood. It isn't moved. I've turned it upside down. It, it's not moving at all. So yes, very happy with that. Yay! Another tool for the toolbox, the crafting toolbox. I'm going to take another piece of that black ribbon, that burlap ribbon, and go around it. Use any ribbon you have. And I know that one inch ribbon is very easily found at the Dollar Tree. Hopefully your Dollar Tree will have it, because some people's tree, Dollar Trees have barely anything, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm going to take this, which I also spray painted black, and I'm going to use some of my tape here. This is just some, um, some uh, like uh, Gorilla Tape, or what would you call this? Something like that? I think it actually is Gorilla Tape. And I'm going to put it down on the back to hold it onto this bird. I don't want him falling, and if I only use hot glue, he may pop off. And I don't have the time to wait on super glue. So I'm going to take my glue gun and go right down the little channel where I put the pieces on. Now to all be locked in together. I'm going to poke it down in my phone where he's fairly centered, and I will add my E6000 around the hole. I'm just going to use a little stick here to kind of smear it around to make sure that he doesn't come out. Give him time to dry. You'll have a, a little bit easier of a time. You can find paper shreds at Dollar Tree. I already had these as they came in something that I got from Shaper Mint, I do believe. Or it may have come out of my hair dye box. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm recycling it from something else. I love to save this kind of stuff. And it looks spooky and scraggly, and I just like it. 
I'm going to roll it into some little balls because it's just easier to manage that way and then place those all around. They're not glued on or anything. Then you can see that it fits when I sit it down. Then if you wanted to, you could, you know, cut off your edges to make sure they're nice and straight. But I like that they're kind of fly away. But here it is. My bird's not quite dry. I'm trying to support him a little. Here it is so far. And I'm not going to glue the cage down. I want the option of being able to take this out and use it for something else. So I've got some more of those beautiful Cosmos left. And I'm going to do the same thing as I told you before. Push those around. Make them look nice. And you see I've slid the leaves all the way up to the top. That fills in any open spaces or blank spots where you can see through them. It gives it a little more fullness so you don't have to use as much of your florals. Trim down wherever you need to trim down because I don't want these all at the same height. I want them sort of staggered. I hope y'all saw the owl in the cage that I did last year. I loved it. It was stunning. And you know, just in my opinion, and a lot of people said, you should have done something different with his eyes. You're totally right, and I think I may go in and add um, something to his eyes. I'm not sure yet, but not sure yet. But I like that the raven has black eyes and a black beak, and the rest of him has that beautiful moonlight look. I'm using the Cosmos because they are something that is in my other projects, so these things are a little more cohesive. Certainly use deep red, black roses, whatever you have. This purple really pops against the rest of that black. This is a really easy, in my opinion, project to do. It does take time though because you got to let glue dry and you got to let the easiest one we got. Dry. I'm going to use a scrap of paper, some painter's tape, going to use some sterling silver or some wrought iron, whatever. A chippy brush and a Dollar Tree mirror. Look at the detail on this mirror that you don't even see because it's flat. It's flat black. It needs some highlight, right? And so I know that we can give this a little upcycle. You know this too, right? Let's trim down an oval that will fit close enough around our mirror. We're going to glue it down. My tape decided to stick on my hand rather than on the paper, so I'm just going to put it on the mirror. It'll come off really easy. I put that paper, making sure that it doesn't overlap onto the black. And then I'll tear my painter's tape into little sections so that I can curve it around with the curve of the mirror and the frame so that I protect the mirror, but I get the beautiful look that I want with lots of dimension on that frame. I'm gonna go all the way around and do it like this. Now, I am going to grab that silver paint and my handy dandy brush. This is a very chippy brush. I usually use it for glue so it's a little bit stiffer. And I am going to just start laying that paint across. I'm looking at it like, do I want to start on the edges? Do I just want to go back and forth? And the easiest way to do it is to just get started. It's only paint. If you mess it up, let it dry, spray paint it black. I mean, that's all you have to do and you start over, right? And you start over. But I like to start light and then I just build it up. And so that's what I'm doing here is just building it up in the areas that I know there's a lot of raised pieces or a lot of detail. I really want to go over there, those edges really well. I want that to show up. And to me, this looks like a silver piece that is old and tarnished now rather than looking like a black piece with silver on it. And it looks like a very tarnished piece. But look how pretty that is now. So easy to make. And if you're living that spooky life, you can certainly put a piece like this in your house and keep it out all year long. It will be nice in a display also. So once it's dry, this is how it is going to look. Very pretty. And we can take this off and see how it looks. Take off your tape and clean that mirror up. A little alcohol will do it. And then get you a nice dry cloth. Hey, there's my camera and my tripod, and the junk in the room. Okay, so that's how that's I going. I really want this to be out there and available for those of you who are ready for it now. What about all those crafters who are getting ready for craft fairs? You need some inspiration. So here you go. Lots of inspiration.
This channel is all about budget-friendly DIYs and giving you something that's a little more unique and different. I want you to find pride in your work. I want you to find confidence in yourself and get crafty today. The first project is a framed raven art. I'm going to be using some black chalk paint, rich espresso, and some metallic. You can also use bronze if that's what you like, or silver. I'm going to use some mounting tape and this beautiful piece of canvas artwork that I got from Timu. I have a frame that I already had and I'm going to give it a makeover. It's got a little canvas in here or it's, it's kind of like a fabric, you know? Okay, so we always start by cleaning everything down. We want to have a nice, clean background for any paint that we add. That way we don't have any bumps and lumps and, you know, we just want a nice finish. For pieces of fabric on a frame, I like to use any type of a brush to clean that as well. I'm going to take this wonderful chalk paint and I am going to just put it all over the entire front of this frame and down on the sides. When it dries, it will look like this. And what you can see still in the, in the dark areas, that's where it's still a little bit wet, but I'm going to let it dry. It is in the process of drying now. All right, once it is thoroughly dry, and you can see how mad it is, so you can see that it is thoroughly dry, I'm going to add some of this beautiful paint and just kind of add it to the brush. I'm going to use a chippy brush. And then I'm going to tap a lot of it off. It's going to push that beautiful metallic color up into the bristles. And it's going to make it a little bit lighter when you apply it. And the idea is to make this look like a kind of a bronze piece, like an aged bronze piece. Now, I also have bronze paint, but this one I just liked better. I, I just liked it better and it does look still like a bronzy color to me so that's what I'm doing. So I like to use my strokes back and forth and then go in and also do it from side to side so that it hits all those high points and it gets on those side pieces as well. There's so much detail in this frame. Uh, it looked really nice as it was but I'm choosing warmer tones rather than the cooler tones of the silver and the cream that were on there. The inner lip of this frame is also elevated so there's just a lot of stuff going on in this frame. I'm going to add and just gradually build up the amount of paint that I put on this section. And the section that is black that was fabric in there that we covered up, um, which is still fabric, but it's going to stay black. I want to leave that rich black background for that area. So I just slowly just build it up a little bit at a time till I get it where I like it. And don't worry, if you get a spot that gets a little too much paint, just gonna add a little bit of black on top of it and you'll be fine. So I can't glue directly to this board because whatever this is sheds uh, really bad. So I am just going to hot glue a piece of paper on top of it. And this is part of a video, it's an open playlist called Halloween Palooza with Crafting with Indiana Jones. I'm going to have a playlist link for you, and I want you to go check out all the rest of the creators because there's a bunch of us, and we'll be doing recipes, and we'll be doing gameplay, and designing, and landscaping, and all kinds of cool things. So be sure you check out the playlist when you're done with my video, and go and check it out. Support everybody, you know? Support everybody. There's room for everybody in this, in this field that we're in. All right, so I'm going to add some of that mounting tape. Uh, my double stick tape was not strong enough to hold this flat, so the mounting tape does a very good job for this. I want to put it as close as I can up to the edge, and I did cut it long ways in half so that it wouldn't show when I press this down. I don't want it to wrinkle or, you know, I want it to look like it cost a lot of money, not like I paid three dollars, you know, for it. All right, so I'm just gonna press that down. That mounting tape is like a double stick, so it works really well. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any wrinkles and just if I need to change it, I can change it. And this way, I'm putting it right down on that piece of poster paper and it'll stay. Now this already has an aged look, which is wonderful, but I wanna make it a little darker. So I'm gonna grab some of my Waverly Wax and I'm going to get a baby wipe 
and I'll rub that in really well and then I am going to use that to just darken it up a little bit more. I really want this to be moody and dark and slightly gothic. Um, you know, you can kind of use your imagination. Some people are even calling it like a dark cottage core, which is really cool, I think. I've been adding some darker colors and, and heavier items to my, my bedroom and oh my gosh, I am loving it. It's so cozy. I'm just absolutely loving it. And then I have a I've had quite a few times where I found some nice older books that are just beautiful and I'm adding those to my room too so maybe a little academia too hmm who knows now go be sure that you let that dry you want that to be completely dry because if you don't it's a wax and every time you touch it you'll be lifting that off and you'll have little spots on there all right now I'm going to place it back down where it was and you can see it's a little bit long, but I just let it hang over on the edge, no problem. This was nailed in, and I did not want to nail it in, because I like to repurpose things. So I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and these paint star sticks to kind of hold this in place. It is elevated above that inner lip, so there's no way to really get it flat across. Um, so this was a, a really good way for me to support that canvas. I'm going to add some hardware on the back so that it can be hung up properly, not to fall off and break anything. And I'm just showing you what I do. Four inches from the edge, and then I put it like halfway. You can see it's like halfway from the end. A little bit of hot glue just to hold it in place while I nail it. I'm gonna go to the other side and I'll do the same thing. Now the nails that come with this little kit, this came from Dollar Tree, they're very small. So using some type of a plier will help you with that to help you hold that steel while you hammer it. And look at this little beauty. I love this. This did not take a lot of work. This did not take a lot of time. And this is definitely something that you can do. The next piece is going to be a gothic candelabra. So I found this recently at Goodwill Bin Store. And I knew, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this. How perfect is this going to be underneath that beautiful frame piece of art with the raven on it? Yes. So, I'm calling this gothic. You can call this whatever you want. This was made in the USA and it is old. Okay, so we're going to use some, possibly some candles from Dollar Tree. I am going to take some matte black paint and I am going to clean this and then I am going to spray paint it and then we're going to dry brush some more of that espresso on it. And by the way, thank you to one of my viewers who told me it is pronounced espresso. My whole life, as country as I am, we have said espresso. That is incorrect. So if it bothered anyone, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, it is what it is. So, now I know. You know better, you do better. So anyway, now I'm going to start just wherever I want to at the top. So I don't have to worry about trying to hold it and touch the paint that I've already put down. So I'm going to add this on here. I'll be a little more generous on this piece than I was on the frame because I just really wanted to highlight it, you know, on the frame. And for this, I really want to make this look, you know, a little more richer and a little more, I don't know, a little more bronze than black. Let's just, let's just say what it is. That's what it is. I'm going to brush this in all of those areas. And you can see the difference that it makes if you look to the right side and to the left side of the frame. If it was left black, you would not see any of those beautiful details. To me, this looks like an expensive iron piece, but it's not. It's just a, you know, like the resin that they use. It's just a simple, simple, inexpensive piece. This probably could have come from, um, what was the name of that? It was it home decor, home interiors. That's what it was. You know, possibly a piece like that. If you can find those kinds of things, that would be really nice to redo. And have some beautiful, beautiful pieces too. So look at the difference that this makes. I'm leaving all this in because if you're not someone who's ever done this before, I want you to feel encouraged. I want you to feel brave. And I want you to do something different. You might even have something in your house already that's black. That maybe, maybe you had farmhouse like me. I had farmhouse for a long time. And now I want to add some color back into my life. I want to add some richness and coziness that 
I am not finding anymore from that airiness that comes with farmhouse. I just want to feel like I am just wrapped up in comfort and oh, like Harry Potter stuff, you know, you know the feeling. That's what I'm trying to do. But I don't want to spend a lot of, a lot of money doing it. And I want mine to be my own, right? Because in this channel, we make it my own and we do it on a budget. And you can certainly do this on a budget. Maybe you can find it at a garage sale if you don't have good thrift stores. Or make something that, you know, take something you already have. Offer to clean out grandma's closet or mom's closet or your sister's closet. And maybe you can find something like that. So here are the ones from Dollar Tree and here are the ones from Ikea. These were thrifted. These I like much better. However, they both fit. So either way, you can use either candle. Now I'm going to do a little something extra on these candles because I want them to appear old and used. So we're going to give them a little bit of a, a little spiffing up. I have taken the plastic off. I have removed with my Goo Gone all of the residue from the stickers. And I am now going to make it look like we've got wax dripping. I did a candle last year using a, I think it was a Dollar Tree napkin that had a raven on it. Absolutely stunning. I am so pleased with that candle. I have it in my candle stash and I might even have it, it might even be on the end of this video. I'll see if I can find it and if I can give you a link for that. If you're interested and you don't see the link up there though, just let me know and uh, I'll grab a link for you so you can see what we did with that candle. Because it was also a plastic candle, you know, a battery operated candle. It turned out wonderful. It had lots of drips on it. It looked so old. But we're gonna do something similar with these. So you can take your heating tool or your blow dryer, whatever you have, blow over the top of it when you're adding your layers and it will smooth out those layers to look like one melted waxy situation. Now you can add on, put more drips on there if you want. Keep it in mind, gravity's gonna pull it downward, so just, you know. I'm trying to be a little more realistic, not going sideways with it, because in my house, wax doesn't go sideways. That would be a different video. Okay, so once that is done and cooled, then you can lay it down. I'm going to take a little bit of my painter's tape from Dollar Tree and go right around the fire part, because I don't want any paint on here. I am not digging the color of these candles and I need to make the hot glue grips look the same color as the candle. So I'll be taking three of these into my garage with a fan and some ventilation and I will be painting them to make them all look the same and all look a little more realistic. I mean we know it's a fake candle, we wouldn't be putting tape over the actual flame. So my heirloom white, I put on there, and then I took some of my alcohol spray, and I sprayed all over the candle. Little flicks, you can flick on some dark paint if you want to, but this is just a tarnished silver color that I sprayed on here. Then I'm going to take my brush and some antique wax, and you can also, I don't know that I would use a baby wipe. It might lift up the alcohol drops, the uh, paint drops, so I just wanted to use my chippy brush and a dry paper towel to rub that in. I'm going around where the wax is, I'm going around the top, all the way to the bottom. Because the little rubber part on the bottom, which turns the candle on and off, is where it's going to sit down in the cups on the candelabra. And I want to make sure that it is a solid finish all the way down to that point. So when we take it off, isn't that better? Doesn't that look grungy and better? Like it's been in an old home? Yes. I'm gonna go around, just make sure that you get all around the areas of the candle that have the, where you have made some wax drips on the top to really give it a nice look. If you have never been to my channel before and you have never met me before, my name is Brandy and I'm all about inexpensive, beautiful unique DIYs so thank you for watching uh, as part of a playlist or just if you found the video on my channel or in suggestions or wherever you found it I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family 
we are very active in the comments uh, and all of our videos and I do respond to everyone. So feel free to leave me a comment and tell me what you think about this. Won't this be stunning with that picture? Absolutely. Okay, y'all. Check that out. Oh my goodness. What you're seeing right now is with the lights on, but I am going to dim my lights a bit in a moment and let you see how it looks when it is dim. I'm absolutely obsessed with the Raven. I absolutely enjoy very much this look. Very, very much. The deep burgundies, the bronze color, the black, the cream. Look how the light, when the lights are dim, look how it just glows on that picture. Stunning, and I'm loving it. I really do love it. And I, <laughs> I love thrifting. I went and got a whole bunch of stuff yesterday. Oh my goodness, I have so much stuff. The project is going to be a potion bottle. I'm going to start off with this beautiful bottle that inspired me to do this craft. So thank you very much to my son-in-law who gave me this. I'm going to use a little metal piece here. These were ordered from Timu. I'm going to use some mesh ribbon from Dollar Tree. These beautiful rose stickers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a sealer. Some tools to scrape and a heat tool to also help with removing the tags that are on there. All right, so it is all clean, washed. You can turn it upside down on a glass to drain it till it's dry. I'll take some heirloom white, spray that bottle, and I'm also going to spray this rose from Dollar Tree. Before we spray paint the bottle, we're going to sand it down. I'm gonna just use a little sandpaper, and this just helps everything stick to that glass. Because if you've worked with glass before, you know that it's kind of slippery and, uh, yeah, things won't cling to it. We're going to be using a lot of paint today. So champagne gold, some of this brushed silver, and worn penny. These kind of match what's going on in these flowers. Give you an idea. So I don't have a solid coverage on here. Not important. I actually even got my fingerprints in there and had to patch that up. This is just going to be a base layer. So other things will stick on here better. We're going to be building this up and making it look aged and beautiful. So I'm going to take some of this mesh ribbon. And it don't probably doesn't really matter which color you choose. They have a variety of colors because we will be painting it. I just like this color. And this is what we're going to work with today. So I'm going to be putting this in a couple of sections and leaving a few parts of this bottle without any of this covering it. I love the texture, the webbing that it's going to give to this. It's, it's going to give it a very old feel. So I at first thought I was going to leave the roses that are kind of raised up in that glass. I thought I was going to use that, but uh, you'll see later I do something a little different. So just keep that in mind when you see me cutting this down. Now I cut this down to frame out those roses, but if you're using a bottle that doesn't have something like this that you want to highlight, just go ahead and wrap it around your bottle. I've chosen Mod Podge in the dishwasher formula for this project because it is very thick. It's like old school paste. Okay, so I'm just going to put this down and it's so thick that it helps hold it in place. I started off using regular Mod Podge and it wasn't quite thick enough for this particular project. So once I get it down there, I'm going to just kind of really lay it on thick on there to make sure it goes down on all the little open spaces and to make sure every little piece of that mesh is glued down to the surface. I'm going to do the same thing for the area underneath where the roses are. But like I said before, if you're not using the same bottle or a similar bottle, just wrap the entire middle of it and you'll be fine. It's very easy with this Mod Podge and with the mesh to get that extra texture that you would need in a project like this. I looked on Pinterest for some inspiration on potion bottles and um, I did get some ideas over there. So if you want to do something that's different from what I'm doing, go to Pinterest, check it out. There's lots of very crafty people over there who share their ideas freely for everyone to see. All right, so you see how the middle is open. I'm going to patch that with a little bit of extra mesh in just a moment. 
To keep things from slipping around in between as I lay these layers down, I'm gonna take my heat tool, and you can use a blow dryer or a fan, whatever you have, to dry this a bit so that nothing is slipping around as I'm moving it and picking the bottle up. See how this is dried now? Pretty much dried. It's secure at any rate. I'll take that same mesh ribbon. I'm gonna cut out probably five inches of that, fold it over on itself, and cut it like an oval. You open it up, you got a little oval patch there. And look, it just wants to stick to the bottle already. And it doesn't even have any glue on it yet. So I will put my Mod Podge down. You can put some underneath and you can put some on top. You could actually put that Mod Podge in a dish if you wanted to and dip it in there. And I'm just going to continue and make sure that I have it all blended together so it makes one well, it will appear as to be one piece all the way around. Kind of looks like spider webs. It kind of reminds me of Spanish moss that hangs on a tree, especially the green one that they have is really, really pretty. But we're going to be putting paint on here, so you're not going to see it necessarily. But if you didn't want to use dark paints like I'll be using, you can just, you know, use this as inspiration to do it how you like it yourself. And this is how it looks. And then on the back, we're going to just close in the little space in the back as well with a little patch here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. We do lots of budget-friendly DIYs over here. I try to make unique ideas to inspire you to make things your own. You see how easy this is? You get a better look here at what I'm doing. And don't worry about the sections that, where it looks a little bit pulled. It's fine. When it's all dried, it's just going to give you even more of that beautiful texture. Look at this. I let it dry overnight. Ugh. I'm obsessed. If you like this idea, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up and share it with somebody else. Now, if you have any little pieces that are sticking out, and they will in this mesh, um, especially when you're working around curves, you can just take your scissors and trim those off. Or if you like that, you can leave it on there. It's a little extra texture. All right, so I'm gonna grab my good old black chalk paint and paint the whole entire thing. I don't like to do the bottom because it's really hard to get that to dry uh, in a speedy fashion. So I'm gonna leave the bottom just the same color as it was from the spray paint. Nobody's gonna be picking up that bottle and looking at it on the bottom if it's in my house. I assure you of that. But if you're planning on using something like this, uh, as a gift to give it away or to do it for sale, then you need to be sure that you complete your project all the way down and also put that black paint on the inside of the mouth of the bottle as well. We want it to be high end. We don't necessarily want it to look like somebody did it uh, on the floor in their house. Right? Right. So, which there's nothing wrong with that. Believe me, I, when I started off crafting, I crafted on my floor. I sure did in the floor of my bedroom. But now I have a studio in the basement, thanks to all of my subscribers and members. And now I have plenty of room to stretch out. And it has plenty of space for my hoard, because I love hoarding me some good old thrifted pieces. Okay. Now I'm going to take the top. It has a cork and a, like a wooden type lid on the top. And I want to give it a good coat of paint, too. I took the price sticker off of there and cleaned it with alcohol, dried it off, and now I'm going to cover that in a little bit of that black chalk paint as well. You can use acrylic paint. I just love the flat look of the chalk paint and how everything sticks to it. Look at that. Don't be worried about the little spots where you can still see the paint through because you will not see it when we get done. Here is a Tuscan red. This is a stunning, deep, deep, almost like an ox blood red. It is beautiful. I'm going to be using that on this bottle. Now, don't be weirded out by the fact that I'm using this. This is not symbolizing blood. This is not symbolizing anything gory. Don't, don't click off of my craft yet, y'all. Don't click away. This is going to be very pretty. Um, you'll see soon what I'm doing with this bottle. There's a theme for it. So, you'll see, but it is not something that is super scary, okay? This is a potion bottle, but it's, it's a good thing, not a bad thing. So what I'm doing is 
basically lightly brushing this on, almost dry brushing in some spots. And you can see that I covered the middle with that red because still at that time I thought I was going to use that as like a focal point. But if you've ever watched me craft, you know good and well, I start off in one direction and just, I get lost in the project. Uh, intuition drives me in another direction and so I just take that road and I'm usually pretty darn satisfied with it so I'm not gonna give up at this point I encourage you to keep going in your crafts even when you look at it and go oh my what have I done what have I done don't give up just keep going and you know it's just paint you could always paint over it if you need to and if you have a bottle that somebody gave to you just go get another bottle throw it away and start over if you have to but don't give up on yourself Okay, if it brings you joy, that's exactly how it should be. Now, I'm going to go around all the areas that have that mesh with this red. The parts that are um, black, like the top of the bottle and the bottom section of the bottle, I'll just dry brush what's left on the brush down into that section. You can see me kind of pushing it down, and now I'm feathering it outward. Easy peasy. I'm going to dry between layers of my paints. Makes it easier for me to handle. Be careful if you are using a drying tool that you don't burn yourself. Just be very careful. You don't want to get there, especially if you've got one like this one, like a industrial <laughs> strength. Keep your distance. Keep, keep the distance from all of the stuff on your table and your table so you don't burn anything. You can see how it looks so far. It's just kind of dry brushed upward and outward from those other sections of mesh. I'm going to take the beautiful flowers that I have here and I'm going to start adding some color to them as well. I'm going to take that beautiful Tuscan red and go over this. If you want to seal these first with a little bit of matte spray, you can do that and it will help the paint to stick down on these kind of metallic looking flowers. I love these and you know if you're gonna do something like this and you can't find these you can do a different type of flower or you can do any type of sticker that you like I love that these are so textured and raised and I think they're gonna be just beautiful on this project now all the little sections that are leaves I'm gonna paint first with some black chalk paint and this is so that uh, the green will stick to it this is just like a little base coat you could also do your flower this way, but that's not what I wanted to do. So, you know, again, I just kind of went with it. And then let it dry. Then I have this beautiful English ivy green. And I'll take a small brush and just start placing that down over the black. This is going to deepen the green and it will stay down in the little, the deeper sections of the leaf. I know it'll stay on the top. The black will be in the deeper section and give it some shadow. So I'll dry brush the cap just as well, the top. Same way we did, you know, pretty much the bottle and those open sections. I told y'all it's a lot of painting going on in here. But hey, Plaid has some wonderful options. They have Mod Podge, they have paint, they have acrylics, chalk paints, tools, anything you can think of. I'm very happy to be an ambassador in their program. Okay, so here is that. And these came from the Valentine section, if I didn't mention that. And I already had them in my Valentine box. I'm going to go on the inside here. This got a spray of that same paint that I used on the bottle. And I'm going to go in at the deeper sections of it and just paint it black. For me, this just helps with a little bit of shadowing. And I'm going between the little sections here. This does not have to be perfect. It's going to be layers and layers of paint. This will help cover up your glitter. If you don't want to take the time of soaking this to get it off, um, which you can do, and if you want to do it that way, you certainly can. And then I'll let that dry. I'm going to seal in with my Mod Podge matte spray. Look at this thrifted paper I got. This is very thick and beautifully aged. So I'm going to take a piece of that. I'm going to take my these little they're almost like a calligraphy pen they have a very long brush tip and I am going to test out my colors so I had a dark brown and then a black and I'm going to choose the black I like the look of that better I don't want you to see the glare so I'm covering this go to Pinterest find an alphabet that you like 
and then you can just copy down the words that you want to use in that same font. So, we have an L. Can you guess what this potion bottle is? What do you think this is? You're going to just trace along. And what I'm doing is trying to get the basic shape of it uh, that I'm seeing here. And then I'll go afterwards and make this, you know, my own. I'll thicken some areas. I'll shade some areas. I'll elongate some areas. And I'll add some of those cute little spider webs that you can see there on here as well. So if you guessed love potion number nine, you are very correct. So not only could this bottle be used at Halloween, but if you live that spooky life, you could use this for Valentine's Day. Y'all can see my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. It is free. I love to see you in the comments. So you can see here, this is very easy. Now, if you don't want to use something, you don't want to use your own handwriting, which mine is scriggly scratchy too, so don't worry about that. It's not perfect. It's supposed to look old and aged and crusty anyway, so we're going to go with my old crusty handwriting. But here's my love potion number nine. I tried to do the water technique here so I could tear it, but the paper is so thick that it would not tear. So I'm taking my scissors and just kind of wiggling the blades back and forth. Just be careful so you don't cut yourself. Get your fingers out of the way. And I'm going to wiggle back and forth to cut this. Now this is not going to be a tag that hangs off the bottle. It's going to be a little bit different, but it's going to be on there. I'll continue around and just kind of you know, squiggly cut. You can get those scissors that have the blades with the little, they're kind of serrated, and you could certainly do that if you wanted to. I'm going to take this beautiful label that we have here. I'll take a little bit of water, a little bit of, of this antiquing wax, and then I'll go over the project around all of my little edges, kind of brushing it around so that the bottom and the top uh, have sort of the same finish. Now this paper naturally had a darker edge up there where you can see the word love and I like the look of that so I'm going to try to replicate that as close as possible down here on the bottom and it kind of accentuates the little I guess you could say tear marks or their actual cut marks but you know aged whatever marks you get what I'm saying. I'm going to go around there and do that on the top and the bottom to try to get it uh, fairly equal. Okay, so we're going to set that aside and let it dry. And I'll take these roses. They're going to need another coat of paint, so don't be disturbed by the fact that they don't match yet. I'll grab that same Mod Podge, and I'm going to put it in the center of the flower. I'm just using a, a sponge brush here, brush here. Sorry about that. Blah, blah, blah. And I am going to add hot glue around the outside. Now, they have a strong adhesive, but they're not going to stay down on the surface unless you do something stronger. If you want to use E6000, rather than using hot glue, that's probably the best option. But to get this video out for you guys, I'm going to do this in a way that is more timely so that everybody can see it. All right. I'm pressing it, pressing it, pressing it. You can see how long I'm holding it. And it will grab underneath on the layers of that mesh that we put on there, which I absolutely love because there's no way this would stick to a glass bottle otherwise. Uh, well, it might, but it's going to take a lot of work. Now, I'll do the same thing. I'm trying to center it in the middle. I don't want to put it too gloppy because when you press it down, it will ooze out from underneath. So I don't want to do that, but I do want to have enough in there that it will stay in there for a long time. And I feel like with this formula of Mod Podge, it's going to stay exactly where we want it. I'm going to put this almost in a swag across the bottle. You, you kind of get the idea here. You kind of see how it's going to go. We'll put the next one up here. And it's the exact same process. If you don't like roses and maybe you're not doing love potion or maybe you are doing love potion and you want to use hearts instead you can certainly do that but I love the sort of the Victorian and the romantic side of this and it's also got that goth look it's just it's elegant I think in the end it's so beautiful and uh, yeah I so I hope you do stick around to the end so you can see how this looks 
Okay, so you can bend these. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but you can kind of bend them a little bit, and that's going to help you get that curve. Also, cutting into them in a couple of inconspicuous places, maybe where there's already an indention, will help to lay that down over the curve so that it doesn't try to pull back up once you have it glued down. I'm going to press it down and hold it in place. I showed you the whole process of that because I want you to understand how important it is to hold that down until that that hot glue or your super glue has a chance to dry. I'm going to put another one up here on the bottle, but because the swag's in the other direction, I'm going to add it on the top on the other side. Same process, and I did take a little cut there so that it would, it's a little long, and I want to make sure it fit between the lip and the curve of the bottle, where the neck goes down into the curve of the bottle. Now, if you want to use, leave your glue strings in there you can as extra texture it's not gonna hurt anything for sure so the same brush that I had the had some black on from the leaves I'm using that same brush in the red and I'm going back over my roses here and it's gonna make this look like more like part of the bottle look how beautiful because the black comes out and the red comes out and it gives shading on the side and it's just ugh. I know you are tired of hearing me talk about the color, but it's so pretty. Okay. I'm a fire sign. If y'all want to know, yes, I'm an Aries, so I enjoy earthy tones and, and hot, hot colors. Okay, look at that. Oh, love, love, love it. Now I'm going to take my antiquing wax, and I'm just going to stipple on a little bit of that on top of my love potion sign, because I want to make it look a little more crusty and old. Then I'll use my Tarnished silver alcohol spray. Give it a few little spritz. Put some little dots and aging on it. Look at that. Yes. Let that dry. Just set it aside and let it dry while we work on the next part of our painting. I took a little bit of regular Mod Podge and water, about half and half. I wanted to kind of, well, no, probably not half and half. More like maybe a fourth of water to the Mod Podge. And then I'm adding a little bit of the paints that I showed you before to each of the cups because I want to thin the paints down. My poor gold. I need a new bottle. I'm going to shake that up. I'm going to spray it in there or squeeze it in there. And I'm probably putting maybe, maybe a half a teaspoon, probably not even that much in there. You know, just a good squirt. I'm going to add the Tuscan Red to that copper because I want my, I want a metallic looking red and I don't have one, so we're going to make it. I've got my turntable, I've glued a paper plate down, I've got a little vase thingy, a little thing to put underneath it, so that it is held up, and we're going to start pouring that paint, y'all. Yes, I have never done a paint pour, and I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but this worked for me, so hopefully you can use this idea for it to work for you. I want this bottle to be so old looking and look like whoever owned it has been desperately seeking love for so long that she or he has used the heck out of this bottle. It has so many spills down it, it's been just used forever. Perhaps it's in an apothecary and the lady who is trying to make everyone's dreams come true has just doled this out constantly over the millennia and it's just crusty. It's just crusty. It's got drips all over it. So when I put the copper and red down, of course it looks red and copper, you know, almost immediately the color that it's going to be, but it will change color when it dries. I decided to add some of my chalk paint to the silver just to darken it up a little bit. You're going to have to play around with the consistency when you do this to see if you need to add more water or if you need to add more of your Mod Podge. I'm gonna put this on after my red is dry. I, my first layer I won't dry, but I'm not going to thoroughly dry in between my second two layers. I'm gonna dry a little bit. You can see what I'm doing here. This one's a little bit thinner. And then I am going to take the other color, that champagne, and I put right on here, my gold. And so that's going to kind of blend in a little bit. I'm also going to put a little bit of the red and then some gold and some silver right on the top, uh, the mouth of this lid, so that it, you know, looks like, of course, if you pour something, it gets on the mouth of the lid, right? Or not the lid, the, <laughs> the mouth of the bottle. <laughs> oh, my. Someone needs more coffee. 
<sighs> okay, so I did that there. I'm going to let that dry also. Just, you know, kind of here and there. And then, of course, whatever treatment we use on the rest of the bottle needs to be on our lid, too. So I'm just going to use my little pouncer here and just put a little bit of that on here. It looks kind of bubbly, um, but that, that'll go away whenever it's starting to dry. I'll grab those same colors that we mixed up here, and I'm going to grab that rose and go back over the rose with it. Is it necessary to do this many layers of paint on any project? If you want to achieve this look, then yes, it is necessary. This project you're not going to do in 20 minutes but to me it's worth it it is going to be so worth it when you see it i promise you i promise you i'm not gonna let you down on this one y'all i'm not gonna let you down okay so you can dry a little bit you can shake off your excess and then you can put it aside and let everything dry everything has dried overnight for me so there's a beautiful pop look at that rose you wouldn't have achieved that look unless you took all the time that you took to do that. You can do it. Just because it takes time to do it does not mean it's hard to do. There's a difference, okay? Be patient. To have something like this, you've got to be willing to put in the work and be patient and have some faith in yourself, okay? Did you see how beautiful those colors blended, the top two colors? Ugh, obsessed. So here we are with the copper and the gold. I'm going to take a very soft brush here and... I am going to try to get most of it off. In any of those areas, like on the rose where I really want it to stand out, I'm going to go back over it with a combination of those colors. I'm also going to take that same brush, and in those areas that don't have any paint except black, I'm just going to lightly brush over those spots, just kind of dragging it over just to highlight it just a tad. Let's get cruising and crafted, y'all. Check out the information in the description box below because I would love to meet y'all in February next year. And you can see I'm kind of dragging that paint from the bottom, slightly up the bottle into where the black is. I love the drips on this. It's just beautiful to me. All right, so we're going to assemble the top now. I'm going to use some E6000 on the top and a little bit of hot glue as well when my glue gun wants to behave. And then I'm going to set that rose at an angle, what's kind of centered, but on an angle. I'm going to push it down with my fingers and let the hot glue grab it. I found this beautiful button at the thrift store not long ago. So I'm going to add her to the bottle because don't you want to keep it on your bottle for love potion? Of course you do. I'm going to put it right up here on the neck. I'm going to take this metal piece. I'm going to bend it almost like a crown. And it's going to be the backing of where our rose is. The color is perfect. I'm not going to change anything as far as that goes. I will be painting the little cupid though. No worries. And I'm going to put this right in the back. This almost looks like the rose is sitting on a throne. Or that there is a crown back here. Either way, I think it's very nice little extra detail. You can add an extra rose. You can do this however you want. You can put your heart there. If you have a button you like, you can put that there. Make it your own. All right, so here's that beautiful top. Here is our beautiful jar. And we're just going to, or our bottle, and we're just going to pop this inside. I'm just trying to decide what angle I want it to be at, and I want it slightly to the side. Now we're going to add our beautiful label, and I'm going to just kind of tuck it around where the flowers are, and I am going to push it down and have some little hot glue there to hold it in place. I'm using a very thin strand of hot glue because I don't want it to show through my label. They didn't have glue guns way back, you know, so, hey, I'm trying to be close as authentic as I can possibly be. And you can see I went over the little cupid there with our copper and gold mixture. And this is how our bottle is going to look when it is complete. Our love potion number nine. Let's add a little quick spritz on top where it is gold up here. And then she is completely ready to go. And you could completely leave that out if you don't have it, or you can use a stiff brush and some black paint to just if flick you that enjoyed on there. this bottle as much as I enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing, liking the video, sharing it with someone that you care about that would also enjoy the content. All these things help to let YouTube know that I'm giving you quality material 
that is valuable to you so that they can recommend more to you. Here is the bottle with candlelight and I showed it under full light so you can get an idea of how it looks. The next is going to be a Dollar Tree crystal ball. Y'all recall I did one last year but this one's even better. Look what we're going to make. Okay, so this is just a little thrifted wood piece, but look at this globe light, y'all. It is color changing. I got this at Dollar Tree. Can you believe it? Yes, and it's Greenbrier. It is actually a Dollar Tree, and it's over there with the light bulbs and the night lights and stuff. So here it is. It's going to take, I think I had AA batteries in it, two AA batteries. I'm going to take some uh, silver paint, and it's like a dark, a darker silver. I'm going to use two of these round tags or hanging decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some of this wire ribbon from Dollar Tree also. And of course, we always start by taking everything off. Take off your stickers, take off your hanging tags, um, and then give it a sanding if it's a, something that is wood. I just don't trust wood. I've, I've seen pieces or used pieces before that look like they would be fine, and I ended up with splinters. I don't want to do that, right? I don't want to do that. I don't have as much collagen as I used to have, so let's not do that. So dust them off after you get done sanding them, and then you need to get that ribbon, and you need to wrap around, and because it's metal, I'm just going to use my stapler. I'm going to leave it in a place where it's not so obvious, where I could get it maybe to the back, but we'll paint over it, and you're not even going to see the little staple in there. Now, it can still move around freely, but I don't want the gunk from glue, so I'm just going to slide it down where it's flat, sits flat on one side and the little overhang only goes to the other side if that makes sense to you now i'm going to measure how much i need for the base of this and put it off now i was able to use my scissors for this it wasn't hard to do but you can use wire cutters if you only have like one pair of scissors i have a bunch of scissors over there okay so i'm going to use a little floral wire this time to show you how you can do it because we can't use a stapler into the plastic base right we can't do that so I'm just going to take a little piece of this. I'm going to thread it through the holes so that it catches on both ends of that, that wire ribbon or metal ribbon. And I'm going to twist it around so that it makes, it's going to be kind of like a bracelet or a band. So we can like slide it back on. Trim off the excess because we don't need that. Make sure you twist it to the outside so it doesn't take up any room on the inside and interfere with you sliding it back on. But you can see that it will slide back on and slide back off. So I'm going to grab these pieces, all of these, and I'm going to take them outside and spray paint those black. Once they're dry, I'll flip over the little wood pieces and I'll add a little bit of tape. Because of the little hanger holes there that I don't want to be as obvious, I'm going to fill those with hot glue. And then use a little bit of black paint once it's dried to just go right over that and cover up those holes. Okay, so this is now black. And we're going to slide it up over here. Now that just immediately gives it a richer look. Right? Immediately. So we're going to choose which side we want to be the base. Then I'm going to just use hot glue. This is not going to be heavy. Hot glue on the bottom of the one that was wooden that we spray painted. We're going to place it down. And this is one layer of paint, y'all. One. Okay. Press it down. I'm going to try to get it as centered as possible. And then we will do the top. I'm going to add some hot glue here. And in order to try to get it where it is the best centered possible, I'm going to get above it and look downward at it to make sure it's in the center. And this is actually the bottom that we're looking at now, so you don't have to worry about those, the spattering of the color. I was down to the end of my spray paint in that can. Note to self, get more spray paint. Okay, so now look at the difference. But now i got to go back and paint the bottom. So I did. I took this little brush in that black and painted the bottom. And then I also go back in. In the areas where, because I didn't glue it because I didn't want residue everywhere, I went back over in any of the spots where it looked like it needed a little extra love, a little deepness, a little depth in that color. And then, of course, we're going to let it dry. This is going to go right on top. So I'm going to take some of that beautiful 
silver color and this is like a I don't have my glasses on y'all but I'm sure you could read it on the level on the label I'm gonna take a chippy brush go into that tap a lot of it off and then just kind of dry brush over this silver this is something that I like to build up and could I have just left it that silver color yeah I could have but it didn't have the age look that I was going for and in order to make this piece look like it goes together I felt like this technique really did it this makes it look like it was bought as one piece just like this of course that's my opinion but you know again I encourage you to do it your own make it your own and if you don't like this you don't have to do this you can definitely also use the glass little um, candle holders you can use those if you don't have a wooden one but I get this kind of stuff all the time when I'm out thrifting so I like to use them plus you know woods a little bit easier to work with it will adhere to other things a little bit better than glass which has a tendency to kind of pop off so you know just keep that in mind and by all means grab some super glue and use that if you need to use it now look at this Isn't that pretty that makes such a good base and the best thing is we don't have to staple this down or even glue it down it can just sit on the top and that's going to make it so much easier so I'm just kind of going in circular motion around the top of it so that it will blend in with the the light Let's see we're going to do it too I sweep a little bit over there and this is all going to look like it belongs together which I love not that we have to be matchy matchy all the time but you know what I mean it feels good when something comes out the way you intended it to but you see you don't want to glue anything down with this because the control boxes on the bottom and yeah we don't want to do that so right where our staples are in the front I am going to take a little spider and I am going to place it down just like it's the same type of little spider ring that came out of the the same pack from the wreath that we did so you just cut the little thing off and then you have a little a spider that you can use and because his legs need to bend a little bit I'm gonna add just a little bit of heat and then I'll take my fingers and push down on it just a little heat and you got to keep it moving because they can burn you don't want that to happen but I want it to look like he's climbing down off of here so I'll just hold it for a minute which of course I edited out to keep you from being bored to death so that it looks like he's climbing down you see and it just gives it a little something extra that's different well, look at that y'all mm -hmm. that are a little bit different and make you think outside the box all right so check out this oh I had to put this in here so y'all could see how beautiful it is look at all the colors that change and this was a dollar 25 this wasn't in the plus bonus section mm -mm. next one is our owl cage okay this is something that I have thrifted this is an owl that I thrifted so a bird cage and an owl I've had this little owl for a while now too it's time for a makeover so we're gonna use some flat black paint spray paint them and then this is how they look gorgeous very pretty love the look of it I've been hanging on to this project too in my head and finally for Halloween we're gonna come together all right so using some rich wine burgundy rust colors we're gonna make a beautiful little home inside of this bird cage or whatever you want to call it I'm gonna use some floral foam to put on the bottom it doesn't need to fill the entire cage up because you just don't need that much foam and why waste it if you don't have to use it right grab your cool temp glue which I did not use so it immediately started crackling and melting my foam but if you just quickly press it down and hold it in place it'll pretty much stay for you that's my experience at any at any rate if you've got a better way of doing it go right on ahead so I'm just gonna put my glue bottle um, not paint bottle in the middle just to hold that space so I know when I'm working my project that there's going to be space there for me to put the owl back in so it's just a space holder that's all if you don't need it then you don't have to do it I'm gonna start working in an a pattern right left side to side north south east and west that's what I'm gonna do starting off with my picks on the bottom if I would have had more picks I would have used these instead of using the loose leaves that I have to the side but 
you never know what you're going to have and if you're going to run out of something I'm going to show you what you can do if you run out of your picks but you have loose flowers so you just take old stems from other flowers or other greenery and you just glue them to the back of a beautiful leaf that you like it's on wire so it too can be bent and then you just put it in the foam how easy was that that was so easy now these picks that you see me putting in now are from Target I got those on 90% clearance uh, year before last I think so I've just cut it into pieces because the color is perfect for what I'm looking at I've got some either eucalyptus or boxwood whatever this is that's glittery and black I've used it in other projects these were my last two pieces I'm gonna stand those up in the cage for the the owl so he will have some privacy in there a little hiding spot these little berry picks came off of some of the other greenery I just pulled them off and I'm just gonna stick those in they're in a deep purple color it's just gorgeous and these beautiful flowers I don't know what these are they look like camellias to me but they are stunning they're just beautiful I'm gonna add those around here and there they were thrifted as well y'all but I know you can get them at Hobby Lobby because at my walkthrough I saw them now for this one I am going to pull the center out in the first top few layers because I want this to make a little nest what I'm doing now is taking a wood carving tool and stabbing down on top of the leaves that I glued on the bottom I don't know where that clip is but I glued some down I made that little slice so that we could put the stem from this right down on the inside it needs to sit nice and flat because this flower is going to be the base or the nest where the owl is going to sit so it needs to be flat I'm going to hold it down with my hand for a while and now you can see it forms like a little nest do you ever do something when you're crafting and you're like that is just you shock even yourself because you think wow that's pretty cool I love it when a project comes together y'all I'm telling you right now I'm not vain I'm not egocentrical I'm not stuck up but when something works out right I kind of want to pat myself on the shoulder and then I can show it to you right and then you can do it doesn't he look happy in there so far okay so giving him a chance to dry let that glue dry I'm gonna go ahead and cover up the foam that is in the front with a couple of leaves same colors that I already have kind of going on there and I'm using these colors again because I feel like they're they're elegant they're jewel tone they're just really beautiful and dark and mysterious oh, I just love it and then once I close the cage because the bird is in there and he's happy where he's supposed to be I'm gonna add one flower right into the front with the um, where we already had those leaves which is glued down so that's where that flower went right into there and went right through the leaves into the foam now I'm gonna turn it from side to side and make sure that it looks fairly symmetrical nice and even and that there is an even amount of thickness in the foliage and in the flower so there's no gaps and everything looks pretty and neat you lift it up and look around and make sure everything's like it should be and so here I found a little space that needs a little more foliage so I'm just gonna take another pick same beautiful colors and just push that in there And this is how it will look I really like this one y'all very pretty here's a little thrifted frame that I got and this is a lantern from Dollar Tree I'm gonna choose which panel I want to use because it has four panels two different prints and I like the cat so I'm going to cut the cat part out and then make sure that it it works and yes it is gonna fit nicely in that frame perfect I'm gonna cut the top off I'm gonna spray that frame in this black once it is dry we will proceed check check and recheck right 
I'm going to trace on a piece of scrap paper right on the inside of this frame. And then I'm going to cut right to the outside of the line. You see I leave about a mm, quarter of an inch, give or take, because it does get a little bit bigger as I go around the curve here. And we're going to use this kind of as a template to make sure that I don't cut too much off, but that I have enough to glue down. It'll make sense in a minute. So I'm going to place that down and just use a little bit of regular scotch tape, transparent tape, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to hold it in place while I cut it so nothing slips. Then I'm going to cut the same distance outside of that line to make sure I have plenty and I don't cut it too short. And I'm just cutting through the plastic part and I'm cutting through the paper part. Because I know exactly where I want the cat to be positioned. And this way, I can get it centered right in the frame. Just like that. Okay. I'm just using my clear Elmer's school glue for this. You could use probably E6000. I don't know um, how it would do on the plastic. But the Elmer's glue works nicely. I did have to wait a good bit for it to dry. But... That's okay, because you know, when you're working on a bunch of projects at once, you've got time, you know, leave it alone and move on to something else, right? And this way you won't be able to see it on that plastic film, if it does, you know, if you get a little too much or whatever, you won't be able to see it. I'm gently putting it down, tapping it in place with my fingers, and just slightly kind of pulling it to the side to make sure I don't have any wrinkles. Then I'm going to press it down and then let it dry. Once it is dry, you can take some small scissors and just trim off the excess on the back. Y'all, I am so happy with all of the stories I got on my um, Halloween Familiars video. So many people have had black cats in their lives and I heard so many cat names and about your childhood and I love that I hope we can keep doing that it helps me get to know you and that's special to me because I really do I really do love and appreciate you guys I really really do so I want this to stand up and I'm going to use these little Dollar Tree little blocks you can get this in a pack in the crafter square I just colored them with my sharpie because to be honest I could not find my black furniture repair marker so this was the next best thing it was right there and it does the same thing just makes a mess kind of I'm gonna use hot glue to just attach that to the little parts there and you won't be able to see it when it stands up and look how nicely she stands there she is miss up. okay now here's the candle so I'm gonna turn it on and you can see that it flickers it's a little flameless candle and it fits perfectly around that doesn't it it's gonna look good together. I wanna make it look a little richer, so I'm gonna take some of this bronzy paint, and I'm going to be kind of dry brushing this. The little paintbrush is from Dollar Tree, and these are good. I can't recommend all paintbrushes, but for me, these work really good for this type, this technique. I just started off by going over the rosebuds and the rose, just to kind of see how much coverage I wanted. But then I decided to go ahead and just, there's little dots on the frame. I wanted to go ahead and go around all of those dots and just bring that out. Just really bring it out. I don't want to have completely matte black on this or satin black. Got to bring some richness back into it, right? We got all those beautiful colors and tones in the, in the frame and in the owl. So we need it here too. And you see how that just highlighted all those high spots? highlighted that it looks so nice and I think she's a cutie all right so here's our beautiful owl here's our happy owl I had a couple of scratches on it where I was putting it in the frame kind of scratching it on the metal and I just used a paint pen and stuck it through the cracks in the cage and just dotted over you know where I had scratched a little paint off and then here's our kitty cat and she's lit up with a flameless candle.
I think these projects are definitely spooky elegant. Would you agree? Do you think they are? A little rectangle here on the screen. Click it next. I think you're going to like it. Bye.